Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And today I have with me Nick Mann from Fish Keeping Simple. Keeping <laughs> Fish Simple. Oh my God. I did it wrong right off the rip. All right. Oh, I restart and we'll, we'll delete all of this. No. Uh, man, you've been here for like three days and uh, it, it's been quite a trip. Uh, I've got a few questions for you before we dive into the live chat with everybody. Uh, basically, first question is what's the most basic shrimp? What Neo? What cherry shrimp? Eddie, what's the, the specifically most basic shrimp? I mean, what, like wild type Neo Canadians? He did film me say it today, so. It's like a little quiz of his own video before he gets to edit it. Oh, dude, don't do this to me. Dude. Oh, yeah, I'm putting you on the spot, man. Um, it's all right to have a say, wrong answer, huh? What did you say? Uh, most basic. I mean... You can um, have your own opinion, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably, I don't know, I think cherry shrimp. Just regular cherries? Yeah, dude, yeah. yeah. Everyone's got feathers. Is that your final answer? Yes. That's the wrong answer. I'm sorry. You will not be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you could have used the lifeline yet, Harlan. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, yeah. it, it snowballs. Oh. Obviously, this is a basic white girl question. True. You totally failed. Him himself just said, like, oh, I'm totally a white I've girl. I've seen like yeah. 300 shrimp today easily. Yeah. Different I, I, I laid that Easter egg throughout the day today, yeah. and it was in preparation for now. Um, and then my other question I only have two. Yeah, I'm yeah. keeping it simple. Uh, so, what would be your most simple? Shrimp set. Um, for Neos? Yeah. Uh, literally just water, um, normal tap water, you know, 180 TTS, TTS, I mean. And then um, sponge filter, a light, and yeah, that's it. Maybe a bit of Java moss. Yeah. Yeah. That's my simple shrimp setup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, well, there's no wrong answers there. <laughs> yeah. So. That, that was guaranteed to end it uh, in a good note. So uh, Shelby is with us today, but she's not with us. I don't see her anymore. All right. So she, she clicked out by accident. Uh, so uh, we got outside said Nick is making the rounds. So real quick, just talk about where you've been the last week. This is oh, not dude. your first time in the United States. However, uh, it's your first time here at the house, but yeah. you've been a couple other places where this is your first time too. Yeah, so where'd you so go? So I went from, I went to uh, Seattle first, mm -hmm. and I met up with like Dean and Corey, um, and then they took me around. I had a great time there. Absolutely, and then, Dean. Any time is a good time with with yeah, Dean. Yeah, Dean. Dean. Dean's yeah. a dude. I like Dean hanging out with him. And then Dick said so Dean was fun, and um, and then came to I went to Denver and filmed with Greg Sage, and yeah. then kind of like chilled out and saw the snow. And then came here, and then after this, I go to like um, I think Gary Lang and Old Rocks, and that's it. Yeah. So, so what was uh, about Greg Sage? What did what did he uh, he keep in like how many tanks to make it? Go I think out he there? had like fifty tanks, but like it's the way he does it. It's kind of like just like you know like old the old dudes that just like they've got heaps they've of been wisdom. doing it for like ever. Yeah. And the guy like has been breeding fish for for a living for a long time, so he kind of like wasn't idle because of that. And then um, I, I didn't want to go to Denver too, so it was kind of like nice to be able to do both things. Yeah. But like, I honestly just want to make like videos of like the legacy fish rooms. Like, you know, these dudes aren't going to be around forever. It's yeah. Just like, how do you remember them when they when stopped doing it? Like, you never know. So, yeah. That's, and then that's you're, the truth. you're going to Gary's, which I missed out on because he was in your uh, side of the world when I was in his uh, state doing the talk. Uh, and then I, I already told you the story where I, I got invited to go to the Bod Rocks and then didn't understand the invitation correctly because I'm not into fish, but that would have been something that I didn't learn who the Bod Rocks were until after I left that talk. And I'm very jealous that, that you'll be there in the next Dude, week it, or so. It turns out like February is a great month to go, go visit yeah. people because I, I don't think people do much traveling in February. So everyone's oh, kind of like home with it. It sucks. It's cold. February blows, man. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, I mean, I don't can see the summer fish rooms, but at least I get to see. Yeah, yeah, people aren't as busy, so yeah, kind of absolutely. Worked out well. Yeah. So we got our first question. How did you like the meeting? The meeting was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I found that really cool. Like, um, you guys have a great little scene. I, I'm I'm so lucky that that's just 
you know, a short drive away and the volunteers and the people involved that put it all together, uh, you asked to come do the tour of the house. And like the first thing I thought about was the club. I was like, we got to get them to the club. It, it's my responsibility to get speakers and uh, you know, get new people and stuff like that. And like, I was so stoked when you're like, yeah, let's do it. So, well, I was glad I could help. And, and the turnout was incredible. And the, the feedback that I'm getting, I know a couple of people have messaged me and we've just been so busy the last two days. Yeah, we, uh, have. we yeah. don't have a lot of time together. So like you're on the opposite side of the world. And so we're just like utilizing that time and I'll go back and uh, communicate with people. But like the, the, the response has been great. They, really, they were really, really happy good. to have it. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I was, like I said yesterday, I keep saying I was super nervous, so I'm glad it kind of turned out all right. Yeah, it was great. If you uh, ever like, if anyone in the stream can go to that club meeting, go. Like, yeah, it's cool. Like people were there for the first time, we're meeting each other, and that's what it's all about. It's in basically smack dab in the middle of West Coast Florida. So if you're able to make it, our club meets the second uh, Saturday of every month. Uh, next month we've got Mike Clarkson who produces TV shows like. Duck Dynasty and other shows for Animal Planet and National Geographic. So uh, he's he's got like a completely different yeah. side from behind the scenes of the industry, and it'll be really cool to figure out what he knows, what kind of tips and tricks he can show, Not especially with that. photography. I mean, and, like this auction too. Yeah, you know, there's like all sorts of stuff to do there. It's just about getting out it, to your clubs. You know, what surprised me the most about the meeting. What there wasn't a lot of auction battles. Yeah. Like I legit thought that I was, I would be wasting some of my time and a little bit of my sleep more than my time, but by packing bags for the club, cause I thought there was just going to be like 700 bags yeah. and how many do you normally get? like four to 500. Yeah, and exactly. like, usually all of those tables are packed mm -hmm. and I'm not sure. I think it was only 300. So like we were short a hundred, but I was expecting like double the normal yeah. and it was less than normal. So. Uh, but it was, you know, the sellers who did bring stuff did really, really well. So, all right, this one's for you. I've learned a lot of breeding secrets from you. Thank you for your videos and streams. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching. I mean, I share my experiences. That's what I do. I don't act like I know anything. Yeah, I, I've learned quite a bit off of you just while you're here. You really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, same dude I learned heaps. well like you've done things in a bit different way and i've always like thought about if we did a pet store and like the risk reward style and you've kind of approached it in a different way than what i was totally thinking about it at all like you're using it to like support the content more than you are for the profit and i think that'd be great but like at the same time i don't know if i want a storefront I think I just want a warehouse, like yeah. a proper warehouse. Yeah, I wanted that, and I kind of fell into the storefront. Yeah, you know? no, your situation, that was super lucky. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think I'll fall into that same situation and be no, that that's lucky. that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I'll just see where that all goes and try and run that the best I can and all that. But so it has to be so cool if you got that, dude. This is another question. How did you feel about the Pasco meet, and how did you feel about giving the presentation in person? Um, I felt about the, the meeting was great. Yeah, like, everyone was super nice. I think that was the redundant part. I think about it being in person, like how. Yeah, so like it's like totally different to making a YouTube video, like totally different. Yeah, like we're yeah. talking to more people. Uh, not yet, maybe after Steam Font ends his stream, but yeah, like, yeah. if more people will watch this than saw your your talk at the club. Yeah, but like you didn't seem nervous at all. You said really? you were, but like it didn't show. Well, dude, because like when I got on, there was like a bit where like. I forgot what I was going to say, and I like everyone was like looking, and I felt sick in my, in my no, heart. I, I don't even think that it was like I can't remember a point like that. The only point I remember yeah. is like I, I I tried to double check before you started your talk. I was like, why aren't the slides up? The slides are working, yeah. and I was told that as soon as you start talking, that you're gonna like clicking on. So uh, I yeah, thought so it was I like a too. reveal, yeah, like I thought you didn't want your first slide to be shown right away. No, so whatever that's just what happens in every fish club yeah game. but like you everybody was looking forward to the talk so much they didn't care about like the, the little extra time and i think we actually started like a tad earlier than people were expecting to so we we used to start the meeting doors open at one o'clock and people wouldn't roll in there until two so like we need the talk to start at one and you got to be before one and the talk was like 45 minutes 
and then you have like 20, 25 minutes of question and answer. And that's the most question and answers I've had. And we were starving. We didn't eat breakfast. So yeah. like I had I was like, it's question and answer. I've got to go get some food. And I couldn't hear most of it. But like people were super interested in what you had to say. That's cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So uh, we got a question. Will you be doing a follow-up video on the cherry color mixes? Yeah, I will. Like, it would be cool if you did something like this too. So I watched you video? your video where you did this, where you did like yellows and reds and blues and reds and four different tanks, right? Yeah. And you said in the video where like, oh, is it true if they all cross breed, will you just end up with wilds or mutts or ugly colors? And you're like, that's kind of not true. And what you were seeing is like the first generation of two. And what ended up happening is like all those oddballs that were in the tank are all possibilities from those lines of shrimp with one another. So I think that the oddballs, the blues, especially that were in those tanks, I think that two blues crossed together and you're seeing the culls and they just have those phenotypes. But what's going to happen is the ones that did crossbreed, there is wilds in every single tank. You'd say that, right? Yeah, there was wilds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so what's going to happen is now there's even less of a chance of red and red breeding together. So it's not just red and red, it's red and blue, but red and wild. And red and blue most likely are going to make wild, but red and wild is 100% going to give you wild. Wild is a dominant. So if you mix Neocaridina shrimp col- or colors together, you, you might have a couple generations where shrimp look good because yeah, you like, get like, lucky. Just becomes, yeah. yeah, but as soon as the wilds get in, they breed quicker. The males are just, they're hung better, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they end up impregnating all the females. And then the, the females, they hold more eggs. So the babies are all wild after that. Well, I haven't seen the experiment for like two months. Since yeah. I've been away from work, kind of like, <clears throat> like I've seen it, but I haven't like looked at it. But, um, yeah, I mean, there was a ton of wilds. Like, I don't disagree. But, like, when, when people think about the neo Caridina and then crossing colors and making something new, I think what's not talked about is the fact that if you cross something with wild, 100% you're going to have wild. Yeah. So it's so important to remove them out of the tanks or else everything's just thrashed. And it's hard to tell between a wild and a low-grade blue or a low-grade red and a low-grade black rose sometimes. Yeah. So I just remove anything that isn't spot on well what i'm going to do is because i got to move those tanks anyway so i'm just going to do like a year update or whatever it is now just see what, what the hell we made yeah probably talk about that theory at the end of it and mm-hmm. say like eventually that will just probably go wild yeah and then just crash like not crash tanks and sell off the shrimp that's mixed or whatever and then maybe do it again yeah different colors just see so like in my experience it's like 99 out of 100 times you're gonna end up wild but it's that one out of 100 that's given us something new yeah and that's how the new varieties come about a lot of them are selective bread yeah and that takes time and dedication like you got to be strict with removing the ugly ones and never letting you know the past generation uh or the next generation be worse than the one before yeah so it's it's, yeah. it's hard to keep up on yeah, Thank you for doing so many streams, Nick. What fish, if any, would you want to take home with you? Oh. I know the answer. Really? It's the rope fish. Oh, I don't know. I Do you have rope fish in Australia I already? With them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was your favorite fish at LRBs, and yeah, I, I reckon they're the, the cooler fish out of out of this house. Like, we don't have anything big with a lot of character. Yeah, you're not like, but you're not big on fish. You got like. No, nah, Shelby's working her way in. But what are those um, those shrimp over there that could go in the tap water? The ones that the caradinas that don't crossbreed. Oh, so the stardust or the raccoons? Yeah, yeah. Those might, those might, they're crushing Australia. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've I've got a couple of friends on Facebook who are from Australia, and yeah. um, I'm not sure if they have those, but like. You guys have definitely surprised me with how many varieties of shrimp you guys have and to get over there. So it, it's definitely impressive. And you have enough, like if I had got exiled from America, I could go to Australia and recreate most of what I, what I have here. Yeah, um, but I'm not too sure fish-wise. Like, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that, that I have seen. But, I mean, like some, you know, some of the plecos, like rubber lip plecos. So there was these, like, autos, um, 
Uh, so the wet spot, I like the what I see was. I like the lime green ones. I didn't see that. They're, they're $80. I saw them at Imperial Tropics one time, and he's like trying to work with them to get them to breed, and I've never seen them after that. But I also didn't like see if they went up on the website or anything. I think I didn't stay in touch. I still have to try and breed on those. I have no idea. So. Uh, so I think it was Dean. Yeah, Dean's bred up. And uh, did he tell you how? Uh, yeah, but I don't remember. It was the sticks, right? He, he, they have like uh, these little balls and they stick a bunch of sticks, like skinny sticks, because autos on flat surface, they're like this. But in the wild, they found them all on these sticks. So they're like curved like this. If it wasn't Dean, it was the Bob Rocks. I think it was Bob Rock that said that. So yeah. like they're curved around the branches. And when they're curved is when they're able to mate. Yeah. And if they don't have that, you know what I mean? The, the male can't come on and do his job. Do his job. Yeah. yeah. They're not hung by them all. <laughs> so nick what are some strategies that you learned from this trip that you are going to incorporate into your operation um i mean there was this cool idea of just a guy keeping like at his store jars or feathers like big gallon jars yeah oh that was pretty neat um i mean dude i'm so tired so like i can't even remember most of the trip now we've been filming all day but i mean well while we're, we're on that uh at one of the past shows we were just at they took those jars and they like made like little scapes out of them and just sold them like that. And you can just add like really cheap, you know, gravel and then a twig and a couple of like cheap plants. And the guy was just throwing an almond leaf in there. Yeah. So, like I thought that was super neat. Like it's, it seems silly, but like, you know, that's easy to do. But like $2 a hardscape, you have charged like 15 bucks. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, um, I don't know what else. Just, I mean, I've learned a lot of like perspective stuff. Just yeah, but come on, Nick. I've yeah, given dude, you two. I'm, I'm blind. I've given you two. Uh, yeah. The lights. Yes. Are you not a fan of the lights that we were using to help you film? Oh, uh, the uh, yes, that yeah, the little brick lights. The Godox. Yeah. What are they called? Godox. Godox. I, did, I took a photo of that so I can remember. That. Yeah. No, like uh, they were starting to film the the shrimp in the the first day. And I don't know why, but it took me like five minutes and I was like, let me go grab. Well, I know why, but I'm going to stay here. I went and grabbed the Godox and handed it to you and, uh, or maybe Harlan first. And he was like, oh man, this is heaps better. They use heaps all the time. So I'm going to be using heaps for a while (laughs) until I forget about it. Yeah. It's my favorite word I think I picked up on. All right. I reckon, I reckon I'm going to be saying heaps a lot. (laughs) You sound like us now. Uh, yeah. Good. By the end but of the stream, it might just fly out. It'll be so good because when I go to other people's fish rooms, they might not have great light. Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool, thanks. Just, just like these double polycarbonated panels. I don't know if you guys can get these cheap, yeah. but just bring one of those along. It can't break. Yeah. I might have got you a little wet there. So yeah. No, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're they're easy, durable. You bring them along, slide them in the back of your backpack, cut it to the same size as your backpack. Yeah, exactly. Just like put it on top. And then it protects your backpack. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon. Yeah. All right. Uh, for Nick, you gave me some pointers on the pseudomagils. You say pseudomagils differently. How do you say pseudomagils? I say pseudomogil. Pseudomogil. Yeah. Yeah, you said it way deeper the other day. Pseudomogil. You're you're trying to take off the accent now. His oh, mom's okay. his mom's American, so like he can yeah. switch it on and off. We go to order food, and he's like half and half, but then like he'll start talking to Harlan, and he goes full blown back to Aussie mode. Yeah, because like if I start saying it, I'm like, oh, I want. Can I just get water? They're like, say water. Yeah, they're Harlan. Like, Harlan totally threw around the lady, and I, I, I hopped today, and I was like, I'm sorry, they're from down under. And I <laughs> yeah. looked at Harlan, and I was like, maybe you should just say H two O two. Yeah. Or H two O. I'm sorry, H two O two. That's hydrogen peroxide. Don't drink that, that Harlan. <laughs> All right. Um, but so temperature. Um, I don't know. Like I think 72. They like it probably a bit cooler. I think mine. You read that from back there? Yeah. Oh crap! I need glasses. Really? Yeah, I have to get all the way up here before I can view it. You know how I noticed my eyesight was going? When we were playing golf, and I couldn't, I couldn't like after, uh, after like a certain height, I wouldn't be able to like follow and track it. But like the craziest thing is, is like once I have a bead on it, I know where it's going, and I'm really good. Like I'm better at finding balls than my my buddy that can like usually see the ball better than me. Yeah, my if it's a lost ball, I'm like I know where it went. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I guess like seventy two. Um, I, I think they like a cool one. Um, when the room heats up too much, like a lot of my supermarkets stuff. Yeah. So, 
I'd start with Kulak. I mean, Deans, I think. Deans is bringing a bunch now, but have them a little warmer. I actually find them quite easy to spawn compared to other ones. Um, I need to take the plants out, though, yeah, and just use mops. Yeah, well, they're spawning in there. I saw them spawning. Yeah, like, before. I was yeah, but they'll eat the eggs and babies? Yeah, just as well. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll eat the, the eggs. So, hatched. like, I'd have to remove them all out of the tank. I saw Shelby was trying to spawn them, I think, over there somewhere. Down the bottom. They're, they're right there. Yeah, but, but take those plants out too. I would just yeah. put just all mobs. All mobs, yeah. Yeah. I, look, I hate mobs. They look they look hideous and so unnatural. Like, yeah, I don't know. Know. when you become breeder, like, it's like the one thing that you can predictably put into a tank. Yeah. So it just becomes so much easier. And, and snails are the nightmare, huh? Gotta keep snails out. Yeah, I, I kill snails, man. Like, I'd what do you use to get rid of snails? So, normally, what I do is if we get it depends what snails. So, I really I've got a problem already with those the flat curly ones. What are those called? Uh, so they're just like flat ram horns. I don't know what exactly. Yeah, but if you get ram horns, yeah. I throw like yo yo loaches in the tank after I've done with it. And they just murder all the ram horns for me. I do that sometimes. I'll like pour alum in the tank. Mm -hmm. kill them off but it's just a every time you see a snail squ squish it kind of thing like yeah that yeah we get on great yeah yeah like dude um there's a certain somebody in channel that hates it but like I, I like to talk about it all the time it's a great shrimp food too you squish a snail no oh, yeah oh they love it well i feed it to the yo-yo legends yeah so like i don't like it i, I want to came in lizard because they eat strictly snails like, really? i think it's the best i hate snails you know, the hideous little guys too. yeah yeah It'd be a hassle to get them all at that size. I want to grow the Colombian rams when snails, but they die here in the winter time, so I can't really keep them outside. Mark down in Miami, they're everywhere. Like they're they're quite invasive. But, Columbia rams. Yeah, they're bigger, the giant ones, but they devour plants. So I don't like want to keep them in any of the tanks inside. I might like run a tub or something in the garage just to try and really get them. But they produce like huge egg sacs. Like you imagine a ram's horn yeah. snail egg. But like a massive like egg grain yeah, sack. It's really. cool. Yeah. All right. What are your thoughts on guppies in brackish water? Well, I don't know. I don't think that that works that well. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if uh, you should be doing that. Like, I, I've learned like with the bod rocks and even Dean maybe, uh, or or one of the other. I can't remember who now, but definitely Dr. Anthony also it was like salt, and you know. Sure, salt in the beginning might be okay, but I don't think we're even adding enough salt when it's we're brackish. to get it to brackish. Yeah, right. so the idea when you add the salt, what I think is it's just to harden the water quickly because they like the hard work. Yeah. So, like, it just instantly hardens it, and I find that that live bear disease can't do, it, do anything with their salt in the water. So, I just throw it in with my guppies sometimes, but it's not brackish. Right, yeah. It's still fresh. Like, if you taste it, you can taste the salt. Yeah, I expect better from you, Mimic. Let's get a better question than that. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have samurai soil, and that's the sam that's the soil, the inert one that I keep all the neoparadina on. Yeah, yeah, the pearl stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mosses, crypts, and java fern, sponge filter, and a light. What else should I set my friend up for their first shrimp tank? This is going in uh, a cubic 2.5 gallon. Uh, so the only thing, like, I would really, like, I even recommend it's like just a little piece of wood to get fancy yeah just yeah. um you just make sure they got the dechlorinator for the water changes yeah yeah i guess so it is a bit of wood yeah, yeah, before, yeah. yeah how's it going zach excited to get some aquatic isopods soon did you see those at all no i saw the video of them in that little tank they're they're in it, they're in the one tank right there next to the guppies the 10 gallon tank on the other side of the 55 uh -huh. yeah so like if you want to get some b-roll of footage of those yeah. before we leave like you can just make harlan do it now you know get him get him Is on it filming? yeah he's behind us mark <laughs> i don't think either one of them are listening uh i think they're filming he's just a little shush but uh the uh the, do you have any experience with that no, i don't have any no. yeah yeah I, i'd imagine it's kind of hard to get stuff like that in, in your country but like you don't you don't know of like any aquatic isopods when you're I collecting or anything. Yeah, I, well, oh, we, we we've got some creepy crawlies here in Florida. We'll go uh, snorkeling down the river, and I'll grab a piece of wood 
and then I'll be like, wow, this thing's like immaculate. Shelby's gonna love to put this in one of her scapes, right? And there's this weird like centipede thing underneath it, like an aquatic centipede. And I don't know if it turns into like a moth or something else eventually, but they're in the like they're twenty foot down. Like they're not like, oh, this just fell in type thing. They they've been there. Yeah, they're, 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 down. Yeah, down yeah it's crazy like eventually one day i'm gonna like not like squeamish out and i'll be able to like get it but like every time like it's like so close to my hand i'm like oh and i don't ever have goggles i'm the worst so i don't like know where to grab it yeah and one time they were everywhere like i had to have my hand like right on oh, we, we've seen like the spiders and stuff and they cover themselves in an air bubble and yeah it, which yeah really cool. shelby's got like a video of that on one of her yeah. biotopes where the that's spiders that's underwater yeah, yeah. it's nuts all right so this is for both of us oh, uh, what does the term velvet in a shrimp uh name mean to you dude honestly i'm telling you man i'm like not good with shrimp terminology or anything like that i'm like the cherry shrimp king yeah that's it i mean so the the what blue velvet is like a sky blue uh neo caradina they're they're in that tank there i do have some stardust and then some other shrimp in there with them yeah. but like you know what a blue dream is yeah yeah that's the darker variation of a blue jelly or blue velvet, blue pearl. They are all so the same color. Darkest. Green is the darker. So green, uh, I mean, dream, <laughs> yeah. dream yeah. Uh, diamond, uh, sapphire, fantasy, ocean blue. They're all different variations of the same color pigment shrimp. When, caradina. Like with shrimp, right? The only experience I've, I've kept caradinas and bred them once. Right, mm -hmm. but I've I've done heaps of cherry shrimp. Like I just use them to clean the tanks and to keep things like as an ecosystem. And I mean they're great profit species. So like when it comes to shrimp for me, it's like orange, yellow, red, blue, and then I can't I don't know anything about the velvet. So you don't have like a dark blue and a light blue the shrimp in is, the room? No, because no. I'm, I'm too colorblind. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's one of the craziest things. You know what things. I mean? Like, so it's yeah. like, I can only do the shit, like the, they have to be like RGB, like, I can't. So you don't really do morphs. That's why you're more like, I want to read like something symbols. true. Yeah. yeah. So, that's why I thought you would get the answer right. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're colorblind too. Um, do you, are you like Gary, where you like to use like your red cherries with the pseudomegills to uh, encourage breeding? You know what I think? I think they eat the eggs. So... I 100% know that shrimp will eat eggs. Yeah. And uh, maybe bring this up to Gary and, like, kick me back right. the answer or whatever. But they definitely do. Um, I think he, like, doesn't get breeding out of some of them, and he introduces the cherries just to get them breeding. And then I think he might take them out. You know, I've got a trick for breeding blue eyes. I think I learned it from another mate. I think Jason told me it from a mate. But it's, crazy uh, one. Crazy mate. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. But... Um, the trick is you add a cup of salt and do a water change the next day. It's like they go from like a bit of salt to no salt and it kind of like makes them think a tidal change. Some of these places do get salt. Yeah. But that, that works for like honey blue eyes and stuff. So for like these pseudomagils here, and yeah. dump a cup of salt in. It wouldn't hurt them. Do a water change the next day. Yeah. And then rip if them out of that anything. tank and throw them into a different one and I might have eggs. No, I, so yeah, so what I'd do is just add a cup of salt to a water change and just start checking the mops and see if that salt detection. There's just so many plants in there. I you doubt they'd lay on the there's, mops. There's, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That that's that's not even the tank with them. I think that oh, I think they both have them. But yeah, I mean, like the, most breeders, if they want to breed something, it's like um, you go with like nothing and you just try and do do the breed with the bare minimum. So yeah. bare bottom tank, nothing in it, so you can control all the factors. I'm probably going to turn these all back into shrimp tanks, even like though some of them are just ancient old, and so that's why I we mean, use I them would. for... Yeah. Yeah, I'm just probably going to gut them, replace the substrate, brand new filter, and turn them back into well, you're shrimp We're so tanks. good at the shrimp. Like, it, it makes sense to do it. Like, for breeding fish, the problem you're going to have is if you breed anything, you've got nowhere to grow it. Yeah. It's like you need tons of grow out space. Like, for each one of those pseudomobile breeding tanks, you need four grow out tanks. Which is why I'm like kind of that's one of the things I learned from this place. I'm like, wow, you'd be able to do what you do in such a small space. It's like if you can master shrimp breeding, man, it's so much more simple than it is for fish keeping. No, and honestly that's why I do the shrimp. Like I we struggled so much just going like 
Our fish stores too are ridiculous. I legit used to spend like half my paycheck every week at a, at yeah, a fish store, and they wouldn't show me the time of day. They'd be like, we'd walk in the door, and they'd be like, "These people again? I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to do work." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we get we go through so many different fish, and like you asked me what the meds were and stuff like that off the top of my head, I, I can't even remember. So every time I have to go back and like do my own research to figure it out and. With shrimp, there was just no ups and downs. It was just ups. Yeah. The shrimp lobby, yeah. Like that's, that's totally it took weird. a hurricane so to crash my first tank. Yeah. Or no, a quesadilla. I think a quesadilla <laughs> crashed the first yeah. tank. But like the shrimp hobby and the freshwater fish keeping hobby are totally separate, I think. It's like it's like marine and fresh to me, Yeah, I think. Um, especially just after seeing how you do it. But I think everyone could easily incorporate a carrot in a tank under their fish rooms. I, I think, like, the tiger shrimp especially. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and if not tiger shrimp, yellow pink bombers. Yep. Like, you guys, uh, even Harlan was like, that's that looks like a cherry shrimp. Or was that you? I think it was me, yeah. Okay, and, and they absolutely do. Like, when they first were introduced in the hobby, I was like, somebody's just renaming yellow neo caradina, and <laughs> they, they yeah. raised them in caradina parameters, and they're... Yeah, they're selling them for a hundred instead of three bucks. So, uh, but no, that's definitely not the case when I've crossbred them and turned them into other things and stuff. Made them yeah. from scratch even. So, uh, hi, Nick and Grant. Nick, I love all your adventure trips, especially the one when you went to the Springs with your girlfriend. It was so professionally done. Any places to do more soon? I mean, I gotta come back here. Yeah. So that water hole would be a great video. Just. Just briefly, it was like two o'clock in the morning last night. Uh, we were on our way home from LRBs, and because it's on the way, kind of, yeah. it's still thirty minutes to get to the yeah. spot where we turned yeah. off. That's been crazy. And uh, you got to see like a little bit of the wild side of Florida. It's it's the wrong time of the year, but like at that time of night during the uh, summer months, we we could have seen corn snakes, rat snakes, black racers, you know, a bunch of different stuff out there. Uh, Mark found you one toad, eh? Yeah, 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 man. And uh, you guys were just, like, it was, he's like, it's a southern toad. And like, oh, bring it here. I want to film. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it's it's definitely different. But like the other, I knew you guys didn't want to walk to another one. Like, it would have been the same amount of driving. And then we would have had to walk for 10 minutes. But you would have wanted to stay there for even longer. Like, we wouldn't have walked home and, or gotten home until like three, four. Oh, dude, we were already so tired from, yeah. the, from the LRB stuff. But. I think next time we'll do it properly and get the drone out, get underwater cameras and all that. Oh, absolutely. When you said you had drones, I was like, oh, I dude, you know training. how cool yeah. Buford would be with a drone? Because, like, I want to get it to where you come from the drone. Yep. And then you, like, almost crash the drone into the water, and it's the GoPro. And then, like, we have a competition on who can swim down the lowest to get you, like, into the cave the furthest. Dude, you can do, like, a video, like, drop down within, like, you the rope, and you pull it back up after, too. Oh, yeah, because you can use the GoPro on the drone, and then just drop it into the water and use all one continual motion. No, I'd I'd do, like, two separate scenes and try and blank them. But, but, like, you can get really cool drones. Like, most of the drone shots I do, like, are the, on the DJI menu, you've got, like, uh, circles lines and stuff like that so i can get these really cool pre-programmed shots where like it'd be so easy man like one you just drop a marker on the middle of that that hole yeah and then just send the drone around it and you get this awesome cinematic look man. yeah yeah it looks so cool and like eagle's but, nest is way bigger than buford and that that's just but if you get it on a clear day like you'll be able to see right how deep that hole is oh yeah it gets pitch black in the center yeah so like, we'll you see. can't see nothing now. But I've got an Outback video that I've still got to finish. I've got a Cairns video, the documentary things that I've still got to finish too. Yeah. I've got like 15 videos to finish now after this trip. Oh, yeah. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's not a bad problem to have. Though. No, hell no. Yeah. Bro. yeah. Uh, Nick, do you happen to keep shrimp with pseudomegals? You can do it. But like, I think if you're trying to breed the pseudomegals, the, I think the shrimp can start eating the eggs. I'm yeah. Saying. We had we had done rams once, and the shrimp were almost like instantly starting to eat the eggs. Yeah. Even though both the rams and the shrimp are pretty well. Fed. You know the eggs I think shrimp don't really eat are like huge pleco eggs because they're just such a big fat Chorian layer on the egg. But mm. then I also do think that the shrimp can stuff them up at the same time, like a big shrimp. Yeah. So, but I think the shrimp still breed. Like if you had super moguls with cherry shrimp, I think the cherry shrimp would still breed. 
Um, so most of the time, yeah. But my, my whole thing is, is if you're trying to breed the shrimp and you get 10 clutches of babies a year out of a female, you add fish in the tank, I believe you'll get less. Yeah, definitely. They stress them out and, you know what I mean, it impacts the breeding in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, do you consider vampire shrimp beginner friendly? Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty easy one to like, just, you know what I mean? Keep oh, yeah, it all well down. Uh, so they're like the, they're not a monos, but they get like this big and they've got like the curved bigger hands. They're, they're kind of larger. Um, but like they're more expensive than on mono. That's why they're not as popular. They do have some great coloration varieties to them. I think even like sometimes they'll change from one color to another, like depending on the time of day or food they're eating or environment i can't remember but i don't have much experience with them i just know i have like, yeah I, I believe they are because they're they're a popular one at the pet stores and if the pet stores can keep them live enough to to make a profit on them they're probably beginner friendly thank you for her 12 month membership oh thank you i can't even read who it is like the the people's names is is in smaller font but thank you oinky Oh, can you get the t-shirts and get Nick a couple Sam Scales prints to go home with, please? Thank you. She's the best. No, she's great. Um, right. So it's that thing, mushroom? Yeah, uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Creepy look. Like, the the pretty cool. So I've got a buddy in Texas who has this like beautiful discus display tank. And he's got some uh, the bamboo uh, fan shrimp. Yeah, the ones. Like, yeah. And those like sit right in front of the jets, and the discus don't bother them. That's and funny. then there's one gangster vampire shrimp that just like rummages around the bottom of the tank with this like massive school of cory cats. Can you breed vampire shrimp? I don't believe they're they're like that. I think they're like a on a mono where it's a two step. Same and it, Yeah, I believe so. Are you ever gonna do the two step? You reckon? So maybe if I have the space, you know what I mean, in time. But like, I don't know if I'd get there, honestly. There was a guy I met. If you ever go to Germany, I've got his contact. He runs an Amano shrimp farm. Really? He reached out to me because he wanted like an Australian shrimp, and I was like, I can't send him anything. That's it. I'll come visit you someday. Like, because there's different like varieties now of Amano shrimp. Like yeah. Amano shrimp has now become a common name. And it was supposed to be for a specific he type has the of ones. shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. And he's able to raise those yeah, up. He also does ocellaris, like clownfish as okay. well. It's pretty badass. Like, yeah. It so so you can integrate ones. the systems together, incorporate them. Like eventually I would love to have just the corner section of the garage just for salt. Do Shelby loves jellyfish. Her favorite yeah. creatures are jellyfish. So I'd love to do some upside down jellyfish with like a macroalgae tank and some like sexy shrimp or some fire shrimp and stuff like that. And like next to those, I'd have like a brackish section. And if I can integrate something where it's easy enough to like mix them up and, and do it, I, I'll try it. But like homanos are almost like some people have done it without doing any work, but the baby survival rate is so low. Yeah, there's like always they, a there's enough people out there that go, well, I started with three Omanos and I ended up with eight when I tore down the tank. Yeah. But like, that's not breeding it. But sometimes you have a babysitter that kills one and they, you know, didn't know if they killed one or two. And so they go buy you a couple and put them in the tank. Yeah. And that might've happened, you yeah, know, true. but there's enough people. Oh man. See, this is why you need to have memberships, man. Where is this at? What does that mean? If I give you so, so remember how I was saying like the memberships are like, I think they're two to $15. So he either just donated a hundred dollars in, in membership fees, or I don't know, it's 50 times 15, $750. Yeah. Maybe that's wrong. It, it's been a long time and not a lot of that's sleep, but uh, Jeff Kane is like one of our biggest supporters. This, this guy is massive and that yeah he's like i'm horrible with spelling don't ask me to spell anything like i'm dyslexic and I'm like you you hands. you probably learned that last night when you were giving me greg sage's uh email you're like do you want me to do it and i'm like no like my fat fingers were that like i'm dyslexic but that was my fat fingers okay and then yeah i'm really dyslexic with with uh 
letters, but dude, I can calculate in my brain and I never showed like my work in math and I always got in trouble at school. But like, how can you get in trouble for cheating when you're the first one to hand in the test? Yeah. You know what I mean? And not just like, oh, a couple minutes early. Like, man, I actually got out of getting in trouble because of the, the principal couldn't believe that I was doing something that they're accusing me of before a pre-calculus exam. <laughs> yeah, All right, so thank you, Jeff Kane. You're a legend. Like, he's a big supporter. Uh, if he has his membership thing, I think he's been like a member for like 16 months. And we like that since like day one. Like that's yeah. as soon as we started it. And uh, that was surprising to me. I thought that you guys have been on ship for like four years, three years. Like since COVID, I thought this like was that you ten years. I didn't yeah. believe that. And it, it's not. It's kind of crazy. You started this when you were my age. Yeah, yeah. What? What? That's crazy. Yeah, no. That's that's why I was like looking looking back at everything, and the way you've set it up and done things differently. Uh, real quick before I forget, if Sorry. you got a membership from Jeff. You can email us at thegardenofeater at gmail.com and we will send you that 10% membership discount code to our website, tgoeshrimp.com, and we'll include that uh, limited edition. We have a holographic sticker, and the only way to get that sticker is to be a membership. And then when you're a member for 12 months, that's when you get the the green kiwi tie tie B print from Sam Scales. And uh, yeah, just email us and we'll get that out to you guys. Thank you again, Jeff Kane. So uh, any advice for Cardinal Sulawase shrimp? So those, those guys, they for all shrimp, they need consistency. And with the uh, Sulawase ones, the difference between all the other shrimp is they're warmer. So they need 80 to 84 degree constant temperature. The problem is, is when you do water changes with cooler water, then you shock them, you ruin your baby survival rate, you crash the system. So heating the water up before you do your water changes is key. Do and you then, there? yeah. I didn't, damn, I didn't talk about that at the tour. That, um, that was Shelby's fault. That's part of Shelby's oh, little yeah, uh, no, thing. Right. Yeah, but uh, they are uh, kept at 80 to 84 degrees, 8 pH, so that we keep the crushed coral in there instead of the aqua soil yeah, or the inner. Yeah, and, or crushed coral, or I do a mix of both. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, under the uh, and then cardinals are like one of the easier Sulawese shrimp because more, more people got their hands on those and were able to breed them right off the rip, so they're so easy to find homebred. Nick, do you have any shrimp question you need to know of Grant? Grant is the best person for shrimps. Well, I agree with that. I think yeah, man, like you're clearly doing the most shrimp I think yeah, in the world. <laughs> Definitely not in the hobby. world. You know, for a home hobbyist, I think. No, like really? you'd be so surprised what they do over in Asia. Okay. Like right. I, I, at least maybe in America. Like I might be a home hobbyist, but I can't consider this a hobby anymore. Yeah. It's so I might be doing it out of my home, but like I believe there's like four or five, if not way more, people in just Taiwan alone that have like eight hundred tanks. Yeah. And they're all like homemade, custom. Like they build them themselves. It's incredible what they do over there. But like their access to uh, raw materials. It's so cheap to like just throw things together. They have like the nice metal racks and everything. And it's like, it's easier for them to get metal than it yeah. is lumber over there. So, um, but like questions, <laughs> Dude, we, I asked you questions all day during that talk. So yeah, I don't know, I guess just watch the talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not like, not interested in caradina shrimp you definitely were but you're just like i'm saying yeah but it's going right over my head and you're honest about that yeah. but like you're you definitely have passion like i've brought in people over to the house that sell shrimp they're my competition on the other coast okay. and they were here for 10 minutes and after that they're in the backyard smoking a cigarette yeah and it's yeah, like it's like i do care but like i was saying it's like a different hobby for me what I love about this room is I can just get like that amazing B roll. Like the cool thing about shrimp is because they stay in the same spot. I can get my macro lens out and like get some amazing footage of the shrimp eating. So like for anyone in the hobby, that's interesting. Even if you don't want to keep as many shrimp tanks as you, it's like if you came to my room, I could be telling you all the stuff about fish. You'd just be like, yeah, just show me the babies. You're gonna use some of those B roll for like other videos too. Do you want to talk about Caradine oh, shrimp? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, I look forward to seeing my shrimp because like. We'll watch some of Jason's videos, and he uses a lot of our aquascapes in his really? videos. 
So it's like little Easter eggs when you see something of your own. Like, Dude, I'm so bad at saving footage. I, I just, but I'm sure I will. No, uh, sure. I, I, we, we just now started putting stuff on an external hard drive. They, really? they keep it for like future videos and I just stuff. I had to upgrade to five terabytes on Google for like all my footage. Oh, dude, I'm at, I'm at 99%. I keep getting that <laughs> alert. I keep yeah. getting it. Like, <laughs> update me now. And I'm just like, oh, I need to look look at your options. I've just been so busy. It's been it's been nuts since uh, the last Aquashella. And not like I'm like, like looking forward to you leaving because like Mark's still here and we still got to build stands and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. like, as soon as those stands are done, I'm looking forward to just like sitting around and doing normal water changes. Yeah, Even right. if it's 50 water changes a day, Respect I'm looking forward life. to those days. <laughs> yeah, like when you were talking about like the shrimp and all of that, like, and yeah, it kind of does. Cause like for me, I don't have the keen eye to know all the different colors. Yeah. Like all that. Like, so for me, I'm just sitting there trying to learn and just trying to like, for whoever's going to watch that video, I want them to be like, I'm trying to ask the questions that they would want the answers for. So, I guess that's like the goal with your room is just to create like an awesome experience so everyone here can watch it and be like, that was cool to watch. Yeah. You know? I, 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 you, you said in like November the next time you're coming. Maybe. But yeah. like if you could come during one of the warmer months I know, when but, all the yeah. Neos are just slammed. Yeah. Like, Cause I love that idea too. Yeah. So like Cause I'm November, I could fill up. Yeah. Those. Dude, you should like it. It would it, crush. All right. So I was at one of the international shows and uh i was outside and the only other person out there we were waiting i was waiting for like shelby to use the bathroom so we could walk back to the hotel and the only other person out there was uh this uh guy uh from taiwan and it, oh my god why am i spacing on his name the guy from taiwan yeah and he had just won the neo caradino uh and uh oh man it's killing me skyfish and like he the, at one point he was like the first one with boas available and there's seventy five hundred dollars a piece and he doesn't speak a lot of english but he's using the google translate to communicate with people yeah. and so i didn't really know what to ask him but the dude had the biggest neos in the contest that i'd ever seen how big could they they're they're at least an inch and a half in size so like four centimeters four and a half centimeters Jeez. like they were massive and uh yeah, like I was like not even interested in Neos at that time because LRB and like just so many people had just saturated the Neo Caradina market. And this was like right before Facebook turned the, the rules and you're not allowed to sell live stuff. So, uh, you know, I was focusing on tiger shrimp more than anything because that was my bread and butter. Everybody had Neos, but not everybody had tiger shrimp. So, uh, that's what I was focusing on, but I was like, I don't know what to ask this guy. Like most of the high end shrimp, I don't got the money for it right now, so I'm not interested in that. So I go up to him, I'm like, so what do you do to get your your neo caradinas like that big? And he goes, the sun, you got to put them outside. So they, like they, he says they grow faster and they look better and breed more if you put them out in the sun. So 100. Uh, percent I've been sitting on half of the IBC totes and tubs that were in the greenhouse alone. And then some of the barrels for like five years, they were doing nothing in my backyard until yeah, he told cool. me that. And then it, I, I had like another show and I was talking to somebody, another uh, shrimp breeder. And there uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, because it's cold when Skyfish told me this. I'm like, there's no point in me putting anything outside. I thought they'd die, honestly. Yeah. Well, it was a risk that I, I thought might happen too. So I sold as many shrimp before it hit Just winter. Like and then, yeah, exactly. And none of them died. Like there was never a single shrimp, even though you go out there on a, like a really cool day and you can't find a single shrimp in any of the bins. Like they all hide. They all hide the shrimp. LRB swears they like bury tunnels and they dig, dig into the substrate. Yeah. And uh, so I uh, was yeah. talking to this other breeder and then he was like, yeah, you know, how long is that going to take you? Like two months? And I was like, Oh, you're you, no way, dude. You like don't know me, and so I had shrimp in the ponds within a week. I didn't even care for them to cycle. It's like these guys are either going to be brutes and yeah. make it survival to the fittest, and I'm going to have the hardiest shrimp in America, or they're going to die and I'm going to start over and we're going to get them. You right, know that, I mean? Those tubs are such a good idea. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, how small the space do you need for nibs to get into it? Um. So dragonflies don't really like land and crawl. Okay. So, so it just needs to be like a bit covered. Yeah, like um, even like the chicken grate. 
uh, the, the small like one centimeter you know yeah. size squares will keep them off. Uh, yeah. What do you buy shake just like? But also, I don't know your dragonflies. Like I'm thinking, Dempsey flies can also make it through that mesh. Yeah. So you might want to go smaller than that. Because I have them that mesh shake on the door, but I also have screen yeah. on on top of that. Definitely need shake Did yeah. you just get my like, hardware store? No, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, like <laughs> that was the cheapest place. Like I, I think we got like a dollar a foot. So for the fifty foot thing of so that's set up out like there. Did you get second hand IBCs? Yeah. And how much were that? Uh, yeah. Off. So you can find them for twenty to seventy five bucks, and usually the twenty dollar ones are crap. They have like glue and a bunch of extra like residue left over, that's and it's not worth is. the thirty dollars that you can spend on a fifty dollar one. You can get one in fairly decent condition. Um, for seventy five dollars, you get like an immaculate one with like zero rust. And it's just finding somebody with like a bunch of 75 ones and just be like, I'll buy all of them if you drop it for like 50 bucks a piece. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I did for most of the road. Yeah. And you never even saw the other side of the house. I know where the new ones are going. Yeah. They're, they're, they're already there. Oh, they're set up. They're just not plumped. Okay. So I have double the amount of IBC totes on the other side of the house. But there's no point in showing you there because like there's no shrimp on the one side of the house alone. There's no pumps. It's there's no filters or anything show, like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm going to finish this side of the house with the fill-up system, with the T-valves and PVC, so I can do my water changes a little bit easier outside. And once that's done, I'll get the other side running. Yeah. So absolutely. hopefully we can do like 2,000 meals a week instead of just one. Yeah, because they just throw the GoPro in and just see them crawling all over. And- no, I have that, but you got to come during the summer. Yeah, I will. Yeah. At some point. The, like that Neo Caradina pond, the yellow one, the first one when you walk into the greenhouse, usually there's like 3,000 yellow Neos in like the first – one foot square in the corner right. yeah uh for nick i just want to say that the pea puffer movie was my favorite breeding movie i have ever watched i just want to say i was so shocked when you told me the price of pea puffers at the club meeting yeah, like right. wow yeah, like i was complaining cost. about like them being like five five bucks a piece how big what's the biggest pea puffer you've ever got dude i grew them i grew them, I grew them like to this big Bro, we we had some massive ones. We had them out in the uh, the hot tub one year. Bro, no, nah, that was what I was hoping for, and we didn't get any babies or anything like that. But there's like so many snails still in the tub. That's why. You so didn't like, babies, but like, I wanted them to eat the snails. You know what I mean? They fussy, never. Bro. What do you mean, dude? I find them so fussy. You don't think they eat snails? Mine don't. Oh, bro, mine were crushing snails in the really? tanks inside. I just don't think they were eating enough outside because I think they eat them. the. The hot tub before I had a pond above ground that overflowed into a grow bed that overflowed into another grow bed or another pond into another grow bed into the hot tub. Yeah. So the, the grow beds and filters were constantly dumping snails. And I think the, the constant source of snails from above and the ones breeding in the tub, the three pea puffers can never keep on top yeah, of it. Yeah, like you need, I mean, they, I think they do eat them, but yeah. they also would have been eating mosquito larvae. Probably not. Oh, yeah. Or whatever, like, but they um, yeah. I, the if you wanted them to breed, they spawn like egg scatterers. So if I was gonna throw them in a tub, you need a ton of space. It's like rock piles, like LRB style would work well for my thing. Yeah. So no yeah. flow. No flow. You don't need it. I don't think. No. I don't think. No. No. Not for them. Harder water. I don't know. Just tap water. Yeah. Do you uh like what's your TDS come out at the shop? Mine at the shop comes out about one seventy. Yeah. Oh, so like we got nice. almost the same water, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, ah, that'd yeah. be nice. Uh, what fish are in the tank between you guys? Uh, these are the uh, scarlet enders. Did they just have something? Yeah. Nothing, nothing special, but. What the hell are these? Uh, yeah, I think they're there's some Danios, yeah. Yeah. They're not celestials, so they're the other ones. Right. I've read those too. Yeah. Danios are so easy. I've never even tried. They're like so it's fun. one of those. It's one of those. Yeah, they're, they're fun. They're so fun because you get so many babies so quick. Yeah, but like I love that. Uh, dude, I like, like a challenge at white. least. Dude, uh, that, the challenge is how many can you get? You're not looking at it the right way. Fair enough. I, that, that just triggered the numbers dude, game and the little, dude, little kid like, inside me that's trying to like, catch the most shrimp. When I like used to do these tanks, I used to do like 500 Danios in there and just watch that like swarm and throw food in. That was like the reason. Yeah. It's just like it's a, it's obviously easy, but like. Yeah, you do three or four days of spawns, and it's like next so. Time. I just grabbed those ones. You reckon I have male and female? Yeah, let me check. Is oh, male. Yeah. Okay. But you 
get a few more of these. Yeah. It's like two bucks. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. That's cheap. Right. We just got those, I think, for one of the scapes, and they, they just kind of did their thing. Uh, what what about uh, Mount Cloud Minnows? How would I do those? Yeah. So um, I get like a 20-gallon tank and then like those pond baskets and a floaty thing to make it float, and I just put them in there and feed them, and then they just drop eggs every day. And when I'm done, I just put, pull that whole thing out, put it to the next tank. And uh, warm water is fine? Cold still? is fine. See, go, I, go I've got a freezing. couple people that, yeah, but I got a couple pe- people that say they stop breathing after 65 degree Fahrenheit. Maybe. Yeah. And uh, hard water is fine. Your tap water is fine. Yeah. So mine stopped breathing after I did like a, a bigger water change with our tap water. Mine, I, originally, the whole thing filled up from rainwater. So they lay tiny eggs. So, like, I think that even like one snail will eat a ton of the eggs if you do get a bunch too. So. Dude, that snails and shrimp, like, uh, one of the big things, if something's not breeding for me, is it, like, I just always check the tank, is it snails or shrimp? Because those things eat eggs. Terribly. What about scuds? Scuds would too, I think. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know, like, I think scuds are, no, they're, they're probably the able too. I can't say for sure. But... I, I, I have a video where, where I claim that scuds eat baby shrimp. It's one of our... Do you they do? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think they also eat fry. Also, when the the females lay their or not lay their eggs, but release their babies, they they're craving some protein because they're you know what I mean. They're not eating too much because they they want to keep the babies. It's a dog eat dog world. Like if a if a shrimp's hungry, it's gonna eat. It's gonna eat whatever it can eat. Yeah, and those eggs don't have big outer layers. It's poop one pop and then eat the shell. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, the, I I don't like scuds. Uh, there's a lot of people that like them because they like devour plants and keep the debris. But like, why are the scuds eating your plants? Why are your plants dying? You know what I mean? That's that's how I feel. Uh, hey Grant, how do you grade blue steels? I can't find any reference online. So, um, blue steels aren't really like something that a lot of people grade or even care about. They're a hybrid. They're not a blue bolt. Uh, with blue bolts, you worry about extremes. So from tail to tip of the nose, you want solid blue. But with blue steels, a lot of people will want, you know, a blue head and then a solid white body and then, you know, speckles on the face. But there's other people that want like a different color blue head and a light blue body and still speckles on the face but like for the most part the higher grades are all going to have either dots on the face or like the gold that i was showing you and like also you can get green you can get other metallic coloration uh that would make them like a little bit higher grade but it's not really something that people grade out too much because it's so opinionated with that kind of shrimp there isn't like a, a set in stone this is what you should go for yeah, yeah that gold one was really cool though yeah no and oh, man there's the, uh, maybe harlan got it and like the separate b-roll or something like that but like there's so many more really? like there's the the ones on this tank here like there's so much moss and like i said you can feed them one day and you'll see them and the next day they they won't i think if we do the fish room tour again because we probably will yeah what we'll do we well, not the fish room room um maybe we just do like a whole b route b-roll day yeah it's so, like i just come with that one lens and we just get all the nice trips spend like a couple hours doing it you know what i mean and then do a film day i know i also think like just to make a way better we, video we kind of like the the shrimp ate your food too quickly today, I think. yeah so we lost some of the crowd so uh, yeah maybe uh we should do like one room at a time and then just have like okay like you, you got enough here oh i want to do one more tank all right shelby perfect go feed the next room because it is a challenge like this is the first time i've seen this many tanks and like trying to figure out how to film that now do you feel like okay that i was late like 20 minutes picking you up because like <laughs> i was like so tired bro me and shelby were up until like three four o'clock in the morning yeah i'm exhausted we thought we could scrape all of the tanks the day before nick came to the house so he could shoot b-roll and it was like something we thought we'd be able to do before like midnight and we were up until three four o'clock in the morning what do you think about it like each tank even if it takes a minute yeah 400 minutes so yeah it was it was a task but it was worth it man you guys i i'm so happy that you guys got like the best 
version of the oh, house. I'm like, so truly. thankful that you guys uh, The Shelby's room isn't done, but, like, if you come back, it'll be so good for you to be like, oh, by the way, you missed this. And then most of the garage is Shelby's, but, like, she's probably going to have the inside, and I'm going to take over, like, the outside walls of it still. Because I have a lot of stuff I want to do, and it's just, like, it's better to do in the garage where in the summer it's warmer. And I'd like to find a way maybe just to keep it warm during the winter and have one warm room to do a lot of extra stuff. Well, when I film tours, like, it's always, like, the first one. If I do a video of someone's place, like, the first one kind of, like, it's, it can be good. The second one's always better. Is it? Because I know what to expect. Yeah. It's, like, kind of come in before the plan, and they're, like, the person I film is more comfortable, so, like, we'll smash the second. Sure. Oh, uh, I think the first one came out well. I, I don't think I rambled, and I think, like, if we were – filming that for like just a normal sit down video where I was trying to script some of those uh, not techniques but like the way I was cross breeding and selective breeding dude I nailed some of those where I was like oh man now you can't get a better sound bite than that yeah, so yeah. I, I think it's going to be really good and then between the two of you you've been you've been taking more footage than anybody in the house combined yeah like easily cool. yeah good yeah. yeah that's a compliment so do fids ah Foods like Mineral Junkie, Raised pH, and a, and a Caridina tank. I use RO water with B, uh, GH plus, and fluval stratum substrate, but it appears pH rises after Mineral Junkie. Um, no, I do not think that it should raise your pH. Um, we're going to be doing like a, a test where we take a bunch of different foods in like a gallon jar, and then we leave them in there for like three days, and we test the ammonia, the pH, and everything after three days. But it's like so hard to test the pH in that if it's not like a system already controlled like a shrimp tank yeah, because yeah. the pH is going to swing regardless. So Would you start making your own like TGOE um, buffers and stuff at some point? Um, Man, I'm not a chemist. And I've had like Brightwell approach me and want to work with me. And I'm so particular. Like by the end of it, That's they're good, like... Though, particular. Yeah, they're... They dropped me, and like obviously, the product isn't the best. And well, if it would have came like, out, would have been the best. And you can make it the best if I had time. Like I'm still in the middle of like building up the end. I know, I know, I know. And I want like, just a few. Yeah, time, no, I, I would love that. to. Yeah. There's also a guy in Florida who's a great breeder. Goes by Plamski. Uh, he's uh, from Poland, and he has his own minerals and stuff like that. And I don't know, maybe something one day he doesn't want to do it anymore and I refine it and we, like, we take over that or something and the opportunity presents itself like that. Yeah, but so opportunities, yeah. It's, it's got to be the right time. Like It's yeah, not no, even it's not something right that I'm even thinking yeah. about or considering. So like people want me to do like certain like scientific names and stuff and I can't even bring myself to like, care about that to learn it. No, yeah. I, I got Caradina Marie and Serata and... Uh, I admit, I forget crystal all the time. It's like con, uh, condenosis or something. Congensis. Congen nah, that's not right. That's a crypt. Uh, <laughs> no, that's an anubius. Uh, yeah. I I I gotta look it up. I just don't I don't care enough to remember yeah. it. So that's not that's my problem. It doesn't make a difference to the success for me since like, oh, I go. Mark's really good at the science of names. That's why I keep him around. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Crazy good at yeah, he left me at our so. Not for Pasco, that's how he says it. We're talking yeah, about Pasco. Mark, right? Uh, not for Pasco, but for the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society, they have a, a Christmas party in December for their meeting, and they do a fish trivia. And like, I lost. Like, we used to have a ringer. His name was Chad, and he's like a grown-up version of Mark, right? Really? Like in the future, like box gonna be Chad. Yeah, for sure. And it's not even a diss. Like, Chad is such a great person. I saw Chad, like, at one of the past shows. And I'm like, Shelby, it's Chad. Yeah, like, yeah. this guy is, like, such a wealth of knowledge. He didn't even tell me he was going to show up. So it was, like, so great seeing that. And he's like, yeah, and I brought you this. And I brought Shelby some plants. And I'm like, I want to brought you something. And he's like, no, I'm going to shop at your booth. And I'm like, there's just, like, great people like that. And Mark's definitely one of them. But he's just, like, a walking encyclopedia. And it, it shows he was working at a wholesaler. And, like, that's how you, you can't be, like, working with someone and then go, hey, go grab this. And you're like, what kind of fish is that even at? I don't know what aisle to walk down. Was that a rainbow or a killie? I'd be, I'd be screwed, man. Yeah, dude. Mark, Mark knows 
yeah so i definitely keep them around and i'm trying to add like as much of it like you know what i mean convert pass off rub off onto me and it's it's working a little bit but like <laughs> Dr. Anthony still probably hears me say stuff all the time. And he's like, oh, he tried at least probably. Oh, yeah, it's right. you got your style. Yeah, Latin's a dead language anyways. Who are you yeah, going to exactly. tell me yeah. I'm wrong? Yeah. Uh, are you ever going to do aquaponics with all these shrimp IBC totes set up? Um, we go back and forth on like doing it. And I think Shelby is going to eventually do some type of farming out there. But like, I think what's like holding us back is I want to do it like for something. I don't want to eat it myself. Really? Nah. I don't know. I, I'd rather like eat all the preservatives and keep myself alive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like on a, a, a strictly ice cream only diet. You know that. <laughs> yeah, we got to experience that so uh, I, I'd love to go ahead and just like breed a bunch of tortoises and grow all of their food. And I'd probably grow all of it, you know what I mean, out of, out of the shrimp tubs and stuff like that. I want, uh, we were going to do something out of our uh, koi pond. And then when we looked it up, it was like so freaking obvious to me. But I asked the question online and I got so many people that were like, you're an idiot because of the salmonella. And I was like, why don't people do hydroponics with turtles? Like they're so dirty, like the nutrients yeah. coming out of it. And then they're like salmonella. And there's like the myth behind that. You know how people were getting salmonella from turtles? Well, I knew that they carried it. But do you know, like, why they were getting it so bad? No. Because the people that were mass producing were they turtles, they were feeding them raw chicken. And they were feeding them raw chicken at the pet stores, too. So, like, people were getting salmonella in the water. And then, oh, here, you want a turtle? Here's a little water. And then here's the best part. People were licking the turtles. Why? Like, to give them kisses and stuff? Yeah. Uh, so people were getting salmonella because of, like, a series of events. Yeah. So it's not just, like, all reptiles are capable of carrying salmonella, but they don't all have it. Like, you have to introduce it to them. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure in, like, a laboratory setting, you should be able to do it. And it, I think it would be so efficient. Like, if Elon Musk turtles, wanted to do hydroponics yeah. in space, like, turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know we sent shrimp to space. Did he? No, we did. What? Yeah. We sent shrimp to space. We got a video on it and everything. I had this Polish company come to me, and they have this team in their university that's building a, that builds a rocket, and they were coming to Arizona and they needed shrimp, so I donated shrimp for them, and they went up into space, but they didn't make the landing. Joking, right? No, not dude. No, like I'll pull up the thumbnail really? and everything. Yeah, we've, we've made two attempts. I'm, I'm hoping it, we can <laughs> do it again get, this the, year. They make it, they survive up, going up. But like, how do you know they didn't make the fall back? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like we put them to sleep using clove oil. And I almost brought this up when you were talking about Jason and the clove oil. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I had, like totally spaced. I was like, we got to get going. And I forgot about bringing this up. But no, we've. Damn. We're in a, a process of trying to send shrimp to space, <laughs> and if if the Polish team fails me, I'll start knocking on Elon's door. Like that. That's also why we named the uh, the must turtle after. They should him. send like shield troops or something. So like. So NASA's already sent up the Opaulos. Okay. Uh, the reason why they wanted to do the Neo Caradina was because they're like a miniature form of like the aquatic prawns that you can use for eating, and then there's something about some of the hydroponic roots and some of the like underwater foods or something like that that need pollinators in the water oh, so the great. shrimp are the pollinators so they were using for food testers and pollination and they were also bees in the same cargo well i was thinking you could send maybe you could send like you know triops and stuff yeah 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 especially you send their eggs up and then that it's like the hubble telescope where it smashes into something at least those eggs will be there with the they just like <laughs> reoccur every now and then on Mars. Yeah, like, they yeah, just yeah. like something triggers them to spawn. Yeah, cool. All right. So, Zach, how are the rice fish doing? I'm definitely interested in getting a uh, set up for a little pond out back. The rice fish are doing good. I, I don't like try to mass produce those. Like, when somebody buys a good amount of them on the website, then like I'll move them into a new pond and then I'll have a bunch of babies raised up. So, uh, right now we just have the blue, uh, or yeah, the blue miokis, and uh, I definitely want to get a couple of different varieties. 
they do so well outside. Yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting for next year, and or this year for the summer, next summer this summer, and uh, we'll we'll start like adding heaps of ponds outside. <laughs> like you know, the first couple when you walk out the door, and then I've got two more with mountain club minnows out yeah, there also. Yeah. Um, I want like two or three of those for every variety of rice fish. Yeah. And there's a lot of varieties of rice fish. Yes, and I'll do it just like the shrimp. I'll yeah. use one to pay for the next. So let's just say the blues have already paid for like at least three more ponds to do another variety. I have some blacks, but like there, there's like I nothing really to, to see. Nah. And then uh, I, I don't know where Shelby went. She hasn't given us a new, uh, a new question. Oh, there we go. Uh, dude, we're so far up. Like to find one, I'd have to scroll down for days. Uh, Nick, are there any new must-have plants that you learned about on your trip uh, to all these fish rooms recently? What's that plant, that little one that's, that you found the scientific name for before? Milk oil or something? What's it? No. Oh, it's right here. Oh, got stigma. Yeah. Yeah. The That's not it, though, is it? Yeah. Is that the baby version of it? Yeah, no, it just stays like this. We'll got stigma. Yeah, the, but the other one. What's the... Uh, I, that's a different type for sure. Then maybe it starts with an M, and I'll have to figure that out later. That, I, um, I mean, yeah, like a lot of the plants here are kind of similar. Like, yeah, also, I'm not a plant guy. Like, there's all sorts of crypts and stuff that like I want to keep, but dude, scientific names are my thing. So like, maybe the the viney bulbitis. Yeah, maybe that was pretty cool too. You know that uh, like lost stigma, and it's like up in the top above the here. fridge. No, this one right here. It's, yeah. it's in a couple tanks. Right here. Let's see if we can find it. It's got much bigger leaves. Now that I'm looking at both yeah. of them. Yeah. Side by side. It grows like almost the it same. It must be the same. But. Almost. All right. So we got Jeff Kane. How long before Nick has a distributor stateside for his food? This has been a popular question. I know. What the? Yeah, it's crazy. It's good. Oh. It, it's it's the one way people have to like support you. It's your merch, know. you know yeah, what I mean. I and I think people know that, and they want to like they did it. There's heaps of people that want to help support you. That's right. And like, dude, just look at this with the one membership. You know what I mean? If that's not proof in the pudding, like I think you should do something to help. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like I don't like taking. That's the thing. So, but um, as long as you're you know putting it back into the content and making it so you know people have more time to view your stuff, I, I think that's what they want and that's the why yeah yeah i probably should stop doing stuff like that and like we do little rewards for stuff like Corey does the the coins and ornaments and stuff like that too you just find your own little thing yeah I'll maybe you get back out. into making beef jerky yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beef kangaroo beef. jerky then i'm that's telling funny. you I'll, I'll take some kangaroo jerky it was good it down, man. yeah it's easy um but uh like i don't know when when i find one i need to figure out how i can make enough food that's the yeah. problem. Like um, if if I wanted a box, yeah, I could probably send you a box, and then I could sell it on the website. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. It's Marcelia Rosuda. Marcelia Rosuda. Something like that. That plant. Yeah, that that small yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. That plant. Though. But um, yeah, I don't know. If I knew it started that. with an M though. I was right in the Marcelia, end. Marcelia. Yeah. All right. Cool. True. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I know but, my plants. I just don't know them fully. Yeah, like I mean, I for the like the food kind of um, crept up on me because I didn't honestly expect it to do that well, and I try not to like. I mean, I've already started getting people saying like, "Oh, all Nick wants to do is sell his food now and stuff like that." It's like, yeah, I barely mentioned it in the videos, and people still are finding it. Like, no, just, you're you're really humble about it because I think the only reason why we even fed it in your video is because like, oh, you want you want me to do it, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, and like. You gave well, me if you food. use it, like you but, know what I mean, like yeah, because if you don't, I'm not advertising as anything for shrimp. Sure. So it's like if you use it every now and then, cool. No, it, it's got to be readily available. So if it's yeah. something that I can carry on my website, and then like you got smaller bags, even if I just yeah, the sell the smaller and that, bags, yeah, yeah. and then you just throw an extra 900 gram bag in there for yeah, me, for you, yeah. I'll pay for it, of course. But yeah. like that'll be my feeding one, because. I like the way it was Dude, for the Sumo Girls. We could send you a heap of 150s. Yeah. Fit. But like a lot yeah. of people, I think a lot of breeders like to buy the big bags of food. But like for me personally, we sell a lot of 35 gram bags of food just for the shrimp. 
So if somebody's not looking for, you know what I mean, a lot of food, it would yeah, work out. Work out maybe, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to go about it the right way. I don't want to like, I don't want to step on toes is the thing. And, you know, you're going to do that at some point. But I don't want to, like, have it available for one person and then it not be available and then, like, for, for another. And then they're, like, saying and complaining to me about saying I've got favorites. First come, first serves. You know um, what I mean? Yeah, and, like, the thing is I, it's hard because I want my focus to be purely on the videos and breeding fish, which is my interest. So, hey, buddy. No, he's fine. This is the biggest dog I've ever seen in my life. No, he's not that big. <laughs> Dude, he is. He's not that big. I thought that thing was going to eat me when it came in. Look at him. He's a big old goo. All right. Yeah. Come on, buddy. See, he could eat a 900 gram bag of Bugba Fake for breakfast. Oh, dude, he's eating some shrimp food. <laughs> I tell you what, he's eating some shrimp complete. Like, you wouldn't believe. We've, we've lost some bags and then found, like, just shredded up pieces of it in the backyard and, like, Dang, that's expensive too. Cause like some of those bags, is expensive. yeah. But um, and and yours would be cheaper uh, as per gram as yeah. a shrimp food for me. So probably. I mean, hopefully over time I can get it cheaper. It just takes a lot of a lot of refining and a lot of all that stuff that just takes years. I don't really have. I don't even have the fish food for like seven maybe, months. Maybe like have like Harlan. Like maybe try to make it his project and have him run with it and just give him like a little distribution kickback side of it. Maybe. I'll let him know. <laughs> and, hey, I'm just recommending him because he's in your circle and I've got a pretty good read off of him. As long as he's not like tired and, you know, to cook from the sun or something like that. He, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So not sure if this was asked, Nick, was some of the main differences and main similarities between U.S. and Australia fish keeping breeding uh, welcome as well. Hopefully, it's been a good trip. Yeah, it's been great. Um, but uh, the main di diff main differences and main similarities. Um, I mean, the main difference is just scale. Like you guys just have a bigger hobby because it's like three hundred eighty million people. So yeah, that's the main difference. Um, so uh, there's like more diversity in the different types. Like people, this hobby, there's like the different categories in it. So like I'm kind of in the breeding category. I feel like. You're in the shrimp category, LRBs in the in the dirty tank category. Bro, well, that's how he does it. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. category. Yeah, like, he no. likes that. It's like yeah. he was saying in these videos, mud ponds. You could have said natural category. Natural. But, yeah. yeah, it is the natural category. Natural tanks, yeah. yeah. Um that's what I mean more, but like um so everyone's got their different ways and I think there's just more access to see that here. Your buddy Jason, he, he breeds it in dirty water, a uh, dirty hot dog water, huh? <laughs> Nah, Jason's pretty good. Jason's good. He's, he, he likes to throw things in tubs outside. So he's a seasonal tub breeder. Yeah, we, we've got a bunch of those in the club too. Yeah, yeah, the tub boys. Um, like, so you, would, you wouldn't catch Jason dead trying to like breed stuff like I do, I don't think. He just comes to my shop and enjoys it now. Is there any like big difference with filtration? Dude, he's bred stuff that I couldn't get to breed at the shop. Like yeah. if I just throw it in the ponds. Like I was trying to breed these specific little rainbows. I just couldn't get him to go, and I just gave him to Jason. I had like this scrawny little female left, and like two males. He goes, texts me this, this fry. You want to take this and fry? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, like overall though, does Australia have like different filters or different lighting setups or anything like that? No, 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 no way. Like, I mean, people see the Australian tanks in my videos. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. yeah. All right. Uh, how does your food compare to bug bites? Uh, well. So my food doesn't have uh, wheat germ in it. I think bug bites does, but I don't know if I can get sued for like talking smack about it. But um, my food also has two percent ash. I think some of the other foods I saw were like nine or ten percent ash, which is just I think it's potash they use. Mm -hmm. So you just like paying for ash. Um, and then and that's that, just a filler, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like a binder, but it's cheap. Yeah. And they use I think bug. Bug Bites uses a lot of um, fish meal, which is like, what? It's a bug food. Yeah. You know, like, if you're feeding, if you're targeting a bug, a bug eating fish, they're not going to eat, like, crushed up, um, I don't know, I think they use, like, what's that, bassa? I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, so, like, I mean, um, I tried with the food, just, like, shrimp meal I'm happy with, bug meal I'm happy with, 
uh, plant meal. We do use soy, soy meat meal to make the to fill it out. Yeah. Because you need something for it to bind. But the other thing too is it's soft. Um, bug bug bites are hard. Yeah. So I feel like the fish actually digest the soft granules a bit better, like that dusty sort of mulmy no, food. Th- so. Like my, my hands are just thrashed at the end of feeding 400 aquariums. So that the fact that your food was soft to break it up to feed like fries Dude, and stuff like that, that yeah. it, it's definitely convenient. And it has its, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it has benefits cons. for sure. It, does, it has cons. It's not a one size fits all fit. My only con to it is like it, it's a little light. So you, you saw how like some of the drop. some of the food wasn't right up on the glass. Yeah. And also because it's lighter, you've got some some shrimp that are just straight cunts and take it all the way to the back you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah, yeah. you can't get away with it yeah. so it's one of those one of those foods where it's great if it breaks down right in the front of the box yeah and then everybody's coming to the party you know yeah. what I mean? it's not enough food for them to take away i guess so a lot of people too they have like there. one or two tanks so like they can just like push it right where they want it yeah but um yeah i i mean it'd be great if it didn't cloud up if you fed a lot of it and I mean, maybe someday we can figure out a way to do that. But at the same time, the cladiness helps a lot of things. If you've got an ecosystem tank, shrimp got to eat, snails got to eat, baby fish got to eat, big fish got to eat. Yeah. So, yeah. Nick, I got to ask, are you a UFC fan? I think I found that answer out. No, not no, really. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got some nice talent over there in Australia and New Zealand. So, like, you're not like yeah, an Alexander uh, Volkanovsky yeah, fan? Volkanovsky. And then you got Try Tuvasa. Yeah, you, you, you want to yeah. do a shoey with me right now on screen for everybody? Nah, no, you know what a shoey is, yeah, though, right? Yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't do it either. Don't worry. Don't I, worry. I shoey, <laughs> Harlan looks like the kind of guy that's done a shoey, though, huh? Have you? Harlan, you done a shoey, mate? Yeah. Ah, I think I heard a little stutter in there. <laughs> I think it, it does it does one a minute, but um, and then also like you got Bam Bam and a couple other guys. No, Bam Bam might be out of Hawaii. I can't remember. Yeah, Marcelia, beauty. The next one. I'm sorry, I read it already. I'm just looking up the species name. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So it's it's the Marcelia, Boudica endemic to Australia. I don't know. Again, not a plant guy, Mark. This is the plant we we're talking about before. So like. No, it, dude. So this is it. Because when you grow it immersed, it, it grows like a four leaf clover. Oh, dude, I, try I have to, this plant. I try to grow it outside. Dude, I have this plant yeah. at the fish room. Okay. And I, like, we forgot to collect it when we went out to the outback. We found it. And then we like drove and we were too far away. And we're like, oh, we forgot to collect it. But yeah, we do have this plant. It's endemic. Yeah. I should know that. I'm not a plant guy. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the next one? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what happened right there. Shelby handled it quite quickly. Uh, so endemic, that that's native? I think so, yeah. It comes from. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. It's endemic to it. Yeah. It comes. It's a scientific term. Maybe maybe the others might not know. I yeah. took a crack at it. Yeah, I'll get up. Endemic. Yeah, it's endemic to Australia. Yeah. Regularly occurring within an area of community. So it's like not all over the place. You have to go to like a, like a really. Yeah. Like, so we found it at, um, it grows like, um, it grows like grassy areas sort of that come up and flood. Mm-hmm. And then when it floods, it has like this like four leaf clover kind of lilies that go to the top, I think. Yeah. And the way you've got it is where it's like kind of on the edge. I think it's cause like it's low pH and it's just barely even growing. My favorite plant is this Rondulus. This right here. Yeah. And, uh, I, I found it outside in uh, Louisiana and it was like everywhere. And I was like, oh man, this stuff looks, looks awesome. So I got started growing it out in the tubs outside, but it, it looks crazy if you can get it like really carpet really nicely in an aquascape. It's like a mid ground plant. It's one of my favorites. It's got such a cool leaf. Uh, what is going on with the zebra baby plecos? I already know this answer, huh? So, so I think I had 12 in the first batch and then we, we had a second batch. And then um, it's it's hard because they've got staff, so it's not the staff's fault at all. Um, but it's like you know I got to go away and do things, and it's just bad timing. But um, 
we lost a few. It's just hard to keep track of board with Jake's. And so we lost a few, but I still had like five or so. And then what I did was before I left, the male had another batch. So I just let the, like, I've just given up on trying to take them out. I let the male just do his thing and he just released all of them into the tank and I just released the other ones with him. And there would be like 18 or so just swimming around in there. And mm-hmm. in the bug buffet, because it crashes up, I just told the girls to just like get a bunch of it, squeeze it everywhere, make it dust so that the babies could eat. So I, I messaged them. They said they were doing good. So I have to do like an update video on them soon. Nice. But my goal is with them, I don't want to sell any. I want to keep the, the next 50 to myself. I've got a home fish room, so I want to take, you know, 10 or 15 home, display tank back up, some downstairs in the basement. So you said you like have 400 tanks. Is that all at the shop or? Yeah, just like, yeah, at the shop. Yeah. So do you, do you have like the most tanks in know. Australia? Uh, no, 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 no. there's somebody. Well, like, I mean, wholesale facilities have like thousands, bro. Like, yeah. So I guess like fish room wise, like breeding fish room, maybe. But yeah. No, nah, because I went to a fish farm. And the guy had two fish farms and he had like a couple hundred tanks. Yeah. Yeah. So not really like you'll realize soon too, dude, like 400 won't be a lot. <laughs> like, no, yeah. like we've been to seagrass farms and it's like not, not really aquariums. It's more like, you know, rack systems where yes, yeah. they're just one piece of acrylic that's just sectioned off yeah, into a aquariums. bunch of, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, I don't consider like the, the wholesalers, as yeah true contenders then, like fish room wise like aquarium wise maybe i guess yeah maybe. yeah but um yeah i mean dude that broke my heart like coming home and seeing dead fish like fucking that just sucks so yeah um but it's all right like the goal is just to keep them and if i can the only thing i need is more females so like with these next batches you're hoping to get more females i learned something really important from dean actually yeah. And this is useful advice for you. It's don't count the eggs before they hatch. It's like yeah. a curse. So like I was counting my eggs before they hatched and it always, it always jinxes it. So it's better just to let the fish breed. Don't count them. When it comes time to move them or something in their adults, then you can count them. But don't count them because it ruins it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you there. How much are zebra clubbers? Dude, they're like 750 to a thousand bucks each. Yeah. But I also worried about the money. Like that's not what it was for me. No, no, no. I was just curious because yeah, like yeah, no. there's there's some crazy price difference. Like pea puppers, five to two hundred bucks, five yeah. to four hundred bucks. Uh the first that came in were probably about that, but like now they're down to like some dude figured out how to breed them in a pond. Okay. And he made like thousands. Yeah. So he was selling them for like fifty, which is good. But right. it depends. Like I was still selling them out for a hundred bucks on the on my store. So, but um, yeah, I mean. What was going to say about the zebra club goes before? Oh, yeah. It wasn't about the money. It was just like, that was a three-year-long project. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and yeah. Then I didn't think I had males. One I, mean, of, I didn't think I had females. One of the things the Bodrocks talked about was like how long it takes for some of the plecos and some of the quarries to actually sexually right, mature. And what what uh, Eric and Regina do is like if Eric fails at something for so long, he'll just be like, I'm going to give it to Regina and she'll figure it out. That's so cool. But like, Eric knows, like deep down, like sometimes he gives it to Regina, and they just weren't mature until like a month after Regina had them, and then they're able to breed, and then Regina gets the credit, and like, Dude, you know, he's frustrated, so but like he's so proud and has so much fun, and like the two of them are such like a great duo, and they've bred so many different types of fish. It's crazy. I think like every everyone, if they do fish breeding like I do, they should buy just a group of plecos when they can afford it. And then they should just grow them out just to taste it and have a go. Like, don't buy expensive. Just buy some triple threes like you did. You know, three years later, they might breed. You can have a go then. Yeah. Like, you can't, yeah, like, they're a, they're a, um, a sitting weight table. Right? Then they're L137s. Those 137s? Yeah. I thought they were triple threes. I don't think so. I don't think, I've don't. i never had a triple three. Okay. We've got I would three. remember triple three really easily. Yeah. Well, but I, I might be wrong. Because, There's like, like the most squiggly line to me look the same. So. Yeah, because like they, they were like advertised as zebra pluckos, and then like I was like expecting them to go for like stupid amount of money, and then I won like the six of them for thirty three bucks, and I was like, oh, these weren't cool. like they, they, these definitely weren't regular zebra pluckos. No, dude, regular but when I looked like... them up, the L number, they were false zebra pluckos, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't care if they're false, they still look cool. You know 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think zebra clickers here go for like 80, 90 bucks each. And um, the problem is that I think they come from like China and they're really good at sexing them. So mm. like when, when they're born, they just take all the males and sell the males. So like you might grow them out for like six years. They look like that. These aren't mine, are they? Yeah, look like yours. Look yeah, like one, uh, 129 then? Yeah, and then, yeah. What did I say? 127s? Yeah. Or 137s? I don't know. But yeah, call it mid Yeah. I do my allergies, but... Um, yeah, it's been so long, dude. I just... I don't even care. Like, <laughs> most of them are. You're not a fucking guy. Yeah, I've got those that, like, just sit on the bottom of that aquarium. Yeah. Uh, Jaden's angelfish are up top. He, we, like... We go to all these club meetings, and they do a raffle, like, a little... Uh, members raffle everyone and like, we never win anything and then Jaden won and he got up there and he's looking to grab these angels and he comes back with those and I'm like where am I going to put rip? these things uh, they laid eggs but they, they were down there with the epistos and the dudgeons and the other uh, the puckos and the eggs just got eaten too quickly so they also laid it on the wood I couldn't get that wood out of the tank alright uh, is Nick going all out on shrimp breeding? I'm all for it. No, no, I didn't convince you. No, I got a um, shrimp rack that I've just finished building at the store that I haven't even had time to set up yet. Like it's just empty tanks. It's like this. The tanks are smaller though. You're gonna do some IVC tests outside of definitely right? do that at home. Right? Yeah, but like the Caradina, you, you don't have do you do RO water for anything? The problem is with RO water because I'd be happy doing that. The problem is the temperature. So like the area that I had in the room, my room runs really hot. Yeah. Um, the the area I had was just too hard to cool. And then I don't, I'm not like, I don't want to just dip my toes in it. You know what I mean? I need to like go all into something like that. It's a whole different hobby. Is your your uh, store not AC then? No. Oh man, that's brutal. Yeah, I mean I could AC it. Yeah. But it's Cost. in a warehouse that costs a lot of yeah. money. So. Dude, that's why I love being in the house. Like, yeah. I, I love this temperature. It's just like, even when you're working hard, you don't really break a sweat. And you're so human. You're, you're breaking a sweat every day, huh? Dude, uh, yeah. That's why you're so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Um, but, I mean, if I, I'm, I probably would do another room at some point, I think. And if I did that, I'd, I'd like, insulate the whole thing. So what then, about at your house? You got 15 tanks of the house? No, I got one tank under the house. So, yeah. but I'm gonna set up downstairs. It's gonna have, I think, 20, 20 tanks like that. Do a couple Carolina tanks. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I'm maybe not all out, but toes in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got mates who also do it. So like I was like, yeah. I want to get my my fix. I just go to their house and have a look, hang out with them for a while. But and, I should do it. And you you think they uh they got like if all of Australia. Put together how many shrimp varieties do you think you'd have there's some stuff he i bet he wishes i could get there okay. like your breeds and stuff yeah i'm just i'm curious like how many like varieties do you, would you say you have access to or do you just not know because you're not in the carrot in the game i'm not in the carrot in the game but i mean probably way less yeah but you can no also i know do, it's definitely you can less, collect some carrot eaters in australia really yeah there's these carrot eaters everywhere yeah have a look at these the purple ones no okay these um the they're Australian, they're, I don't know. But, okay. Um, they're an Australian one. You can find them in the Dane tree. And I don't know how the hell to breed them. There you go. Look at that. You can show up to the stream too if you want. Yeah, sure. Hold on one second. I'll get the better. So they're like this like kind of like a zebra thing, but you can find them in the Australian rainforest. It's almost like a, a super crystal black coal. Yeah. So... Definitely a cool shrimp, but I've never seen him in the hobby. Man, I might have to go do an expedition with Gary. And bring You'd probably back. be able to get them back, too. Yeah. Well, I think I would definitely bring the, the six specimens over, and they'd probably all be shrimp. Yeah. As long as it wasn't like, uh, I believe, in Peru or Uruguay, like you're not a lot to bring invertebrates back. Right. Like you're not allowed to leave their country with it. I mean, it's their rule, but we can come home from the uh, I mean, any like, country if we're allowed through. Like, I've never bred them, but a store got them near me and they're only like 20 bucks each, so have a crack. Yeah, for sure. Are some Neocaridina shrimp harder to keep than others? Uh, they they would only be harder if they're going to go ahead and uh, be imported and not like homebred or something yeah. like that. So it's really source. 
the only difference in it being an easy to keep shrimp or a hard to keep shrimp is like whether or not your parameters line up with the person that got it from and whether or not the shrimp came through five different hands before it got to you or straight from the source. That's going to make the biggest difference. But we treat our yellows, blacks, red, blues, snowballs, everything the exact same. And for the most part, they all breed the same. The difference is the coals. The reallys, they throw away more coals. The yellows almost throw none, you know? Uh, so Brandon asks, what was the coolest thing you saw learned at Dean's? I think the coolest thing Dean has is his, um, his fry system. He has that little fry rack thing. <clears throat> and then... Um, did you see the fry rack in the garage? I did, but Dean's is like immaculate, dude. Yeah? He's like the king he did, of it. He doesn't like show like a picture, I guess, of like the big right. thing when he did his talk. Okay, this, the thing I learned about Dean is Dean is the true king of DIY, bro. That yeah. That guy is properly like oh, yeah. good at DIY. Like, I believe it. Like everything he makes DIY looks machine made. Oh, well, just the way he like spliced all of his lights together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Insane, insane. Like he's yeah. he's so neat and like almost anal in a little way. It's really, I get, it really impressed me. So that probably, um, and then just um, how how well he automated it. His, his the reason his fish room is clean and successful is because he gets time to do it because he set it up right. Yeah, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah it's cool. Yeah, no, De Dean's got like that wealth of knowledge. Like, who's got the phone on right now, and I can hear our echo. Who's listening to live stream around us? If you could turn that down, please. Maybe. It's, it's, it's highly distracting. Yeah. But. <laughs> I think it's Mark, is it? No. So, yeah. Mark, Mark, it's not Mark. Mark can't even find his car keys, let alone the live stream. All right. Uh, so, Johnny asked if uh, Nick was to start a Caradina tank, which one would you advise is the best for a beginner? Uh, I think I gave you three. Uh, tangerine tigers is the first one. Like if you king can't Kongs. breed tangerine tigers or yellow king Kongs, it's like the, almost the same shrimp to me. If you can't breed those or keep those alive, you're probably killing a lot of stuff in your fish room. Okay. Like that's like a good, like you should probably stop and figure out what killed them before you move forward. Um, but what, what's the two you want the most though? The ones I want the most are probably, uh, I like the calciums. No, no, the Stardust and the Raccoons that I would recommend you have for the store the most. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, The Calcios are cool, too. Like, if that's your choice. But, like, what I would recommend for you to get started in keeping my, Caradina, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's those three. I do want something that I can just, a Caradina that just can go into my tap water and do its thing. Yeah, but the Raccoons and the Stardust, I think you, uh, that you really like the color. Though, get... Oh, that's the thing is I don't know about the, about the heat. There you go, yes, because we, we, we put some tangerine tigers out in the garage, and they didn't fare too well. But like, there's still some babies that are growing up and they're kicking. So dude, my fish room goes through like seasons where, like, in summer we breed a ton of catfish and yeah. blackos and stuff because they're like the the storms and that. But then the blue eyes and the rainbows stop, but they grow quick. I've got to go ahead. And then in winter, the rainbows breed well, the catfish stop. Yeah, right. So sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. No, 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 it is me. I've got a buddy that, uh, nah, see, I totally forgot. Oh, yeah, breeds tang tie outside, so they go with the season, and those are caradina shrimp, and yeah. he, you know what I mean? He, he does just well with those, and they should be the same for the tanger tigers. So I'm thinking because I kept them in a garage and in the top rack, they were fluctuating and getting just a little bit hotter than, like, a pond underground where it's, like, a little bit more insulated and cooled with the ground temperature. So even trying them in the IBC totes, I didn't have luck. But I think maybe like a ground pond might be a little bit better, keep their temperatures more stable. Maybe. But I will at some point get into it. Like, but yeah, Neo Caradina are just so vulnerable, like so, so indestructible. Easy. Yeah, oh, dude, I love them. Uh, Nick, I have seen people breeding zebras in rock caves, but in the wild there are logs with heaps of holes dug out that plecos use. Is anyone trying to use wood instead of rocks? Um, I don't know. I think because they because they breed in the caves. That I, so the ones that they breed in, I made, which is cool. So I like handcrafted these caves, and like what I did was I made like the caves that had like a little corner in the back or something like that, so like you could like push the eggs into that corner. Mm -hmm. um, 
But if they're going to breed, they're breeding in the caves already, so I won't change it. Uh, but you can try the wood out. Um, my, my zebras are in the wood all yeah, the time. Yeah, dude, they, like, I they, they barely them. ever use the caves. And I actually added them into that tank because that, that piece of wood had so many natural caves on it. And uh, for the longest time, they were just chilling out on the wood. They never left it. So Once they start becoming male and female, they might start thinking about that cave a bit more. If you did have a cave in there, there is There is one that always stays in the cave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that'll be your boy. And he's going to just, that's his territory. That's his dugout. And like, he's just going to wait until the females are ready to go and go in there with them. Yeah. How, how, how long do you think? Two and a half years it takes. So I've course, probably had those for that long. They didn't look big enough. Um, I mean, if you intensively, if you put them in a tube and fed them, yeah, like, probably eighteen months. I reckon you can get them breeding. But um, I've had them since like the beginning of COVID, if not before that. Really? Yeah. Man, I didn't have a good enough look then. You gotta They're feed small. Them. You gotta feed them. I feed them heaps of shrimp. They should food. get this big. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the other the other fish are eating all the food, but like we, I, think, they, I yell at Shelby all the time for overfeeding that tank. Dude, you, oh, you can't overfeed fish tanks. Right? It's, it's really oh boring. yeah, you can. you can. But like, oh yeah, you can. you can. But like, I mean, you could go past that tank three or four times a day and feed it, and you'd be fine. That's what I do. Yeah, but I think it's the amount of food that gets dumped in that that's the key. Like, you can't dump in too much food. No. They gotta want to eat it all in like the first five minutes. Yeah. Or else yeah, it yeah. just goes to waste. That's the problem. I mean, these tanks would be all right because like, snails and shrimp, so they, they kind of clean it up in the plants as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, don't overfeed fish, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, this is for me on using Texas Holy Rock for Neocaridina Davii. Uh, same question for the Lotus Pods. Uh, the Texas Holy Rock is great. Like, it was one of my favorite rocks uh, when we first got into the hobby. It was at all the local pet stores. So I would just go into the bins and like pick out like the coolest pieces and just buy that and then stash it away. Uh, it's got to be like somewhere in the garage. I have no idea. I haven't seen it in ages, but actually I think it's in like an escape tank up on the wall. Um, and you might, you might be a good person to ask this question. Um, you know, like Texas Holy Rock's one example, but the uh, volcanic rock as well. Mm -hmm. I heard that's bad for shrimp. Because apparently, you know how they've got the little hairs and stuff when they pick up things mm -hmm. to eat? Apparently, there's like little, they can like hurt them on the volcanic rock. Is that total BS where I heard that? So like legit for the Sulawase shrimp? Yeah. I was told to put crushed rock and crushed coral halfway into the substrate and halfway out so that certain microorganisms would colonize inside the lava rock that they pick, can pick and graze out of. So I've never, I've never heard that. And we've got like Anubias attached to lava rocks all over the place. You just can't see the lava so rocks anymore because of the moss. Yes, then. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, full send on on the holy rock and lava rock. Uh, I couldn't think of a rock sharp enough to like mess up shrimp. That's like, what I, I was never heard of too. That. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where. Yeah. Um, and then for the lotus pods. I'm not a big fan of the Lotus pods because they break down fast and they turn like real squishy and like you try to go like siphon up some mold next to them and all of a sudden they get sucked right up because they're so soft. You don't do much with botanicals, do you? No, because it turns into mold and I don't want the mess. Like that drives me nuts. That little bit of debris. Like I tried so hard to like siphon that tank up and there's just like a, 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 a still a good little amount. And like it might not be in every tank, but... I'd rather it not be in any tank. See, like, so, like, for that tank, the yeah. mold's good. And the mold's chill there. Like, I think that actually does help to have, like, the snails breaking that down a little bit. But, like, in a shrimp tank, I guess, like, it's different. But. Yeah, yeah, sure. Too, I, don't, yeah. I don't think it's needed at yeah. all. I think mold is a byproduct, and it's not an essential. It's not, like, needed for life. And if you're going to, like, these high-end like laboratory fish breeding sanctuary, nobody keeps mold on the bottom. Yeah, I don't keep mold in a lot of my tanks, but just with plants, I'm only trying to. Is it like, you reckon? No. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's creating more pockets of fucking debris and more detritus to build up. And like, I don't know. I, I feel like it just colonizes more mold and there's debris. Like a, there's two, like, there's like different types of it too. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I prefer bubbly. not to. Yeah. And the the more botanicals, the more leaves, the more stuff you throw in there, the, the more dirty it's going to be. And I, I, it's that different philosophy than LRV that I just I don't follow. Yeah, yeah, true. So I'm also not trying to keep some of the same fish. Like uh, Richard Reynolds, you met him. He was at the house. Says the Bashardi won't breed until there's a moment in the tank. There's no moment in my Bashardi tank, and they're not breeding. You know what I mean? So I'm never going to give them a chance. I'll get rid of them before I let mom get in the tank. Yeah. So it's just that's not for me. Uh, and, like, I'm lucky enough that Shelby enjoys all the aquariums, and she doesn't enjoy the mom either. So, like, she helps me make sure that the tanks are nice and clean and well-kempt. And I actually don't mind the mom. In my in my takes that's just how i do it but like so i guess that's where like the lrb appreciation comes from because like i do like the mold i think the fish eat it and um yeah i think it helps the plants i think they eat it because it's in the way you reckon i don't think they eat it on purpose i think they do because i think it has like the bacteria and stuff on it so i think they i actually do i disagree i reckon they do eat it for that um uh, i think they go through it because there's a worm or something that they see in it I don't think you'd cool. ever put mom in a tank and any fish would graze off of it. I actually, again, disagree. Because, like, I, I used to... So when I was breeding Corys, one thing, if I had a ton of mom in a tank, yeah. like with babies, I'd throw three or, three or four candy Corys in there. In a week, the mom would be gone. Because they just I, constantly would graze I on I think it's because like, there's worms or something else in the mom, and yeah. they're eating that, and the mom is the byproduct. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think it does help, though. But it depends. Like, for carrying tanks, I wouldn't... The way you do it is good. I'm yeah. not saying that. No, it, it's just a preference, even in my fish tanks. Yeah, yeah. Even if I had a breeding room, I don't think I'd let the mom breed up, build well, up. Dean doesn't. De <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think me and Dean had a lot of the same philosophies at, yeah. a, after he left. And, like, more power to Dean because he does it the fish way. And, yeah. like, taking care of the fry. Yeah, I, like I haven't even food. attempted to, like, really – give a crack at hatching baby brine shrimp so like yeah. i can't even consider myself a fish keeper until i do that <laughs> you know what no, i mean no, yeah so that's not it's it's dude it's just different ways like i say like it's um everyone's got a way and that's kind of like what i learned about this whole trip it's just like all the different methods and all that sort of stuff it's something to learn off everyone you, you learn about clodophora while you're here <laughs> yeah all right clodophora, yeah yeah <laughs> I don't have a lot of Clodopera to show you right now. It's all outside. <laughs> so, yeah. You, every algae, pretty much, that you saw at uh, LRBs was Clodopera, though. Really? Yeah, all of that. That's all Clodopera. Uh, Nick, what breeds would you bring back with you if you could after your U.S. tour? I think we already did that about the, about the shrimp. Pretty much already answered that. Um, was there another fish or something? Yeah, there's like these... Um... I mean, Gary Langer might see that there's these Cali Tower rainbows. So a bunch of our club members actually got the eggs off of those when Gary came down. The hatchet? Yeah. Successfully yeah. breeding them now? Yeah. Good. We'd probably, we might have one of the, the followers, if you're watching, wait, say something. Yeah, Cali Towers would be cool, um, which is funny. You'd think that I could have access, but I don't. Yeah, those. no, I, I, I found that funny right away, but then I'm thinking about, like, how big it is and, like, when you think about, yeah, when you think about Australia compared to the United States, uh, we have so many least killies fish. Like we could have stopped last night at two o'clock in the morning on one of the little it's side nice culverts stuff. and took in the dip net out of the car and in one scoop a hundred least killies fish. Nothing here in no, that's nothing to us here in Florida, but to Alex in Washington after he left this trip, he's like. Dude, I should have got so much more B-roll footage of the least killies fish. And, like, he was so bored of it because the very first stop I took him to, first net, there's like, 80 to 100 of them. Yeah. So then after that, the whole rest of the trip, he's like, get this out of here. Get this Wait, out so of my way. B -roll of the, the, the least killies fish because, stuff. like, everybody loved it because he didn't. But, like, his trip to Florida, the very first thing you're catching, and then it's in every single net. So, like, it immediately is like, like, oh, this isn't that special. So you lose that, like, you know yeah. what I mean, essence of it. Yeah. And then you forget to, like, capture that essence yeah. because you're so bored of it. Yeah, so then know. he got all the way home and he's like, why didn't I get more of that? Like, it's crazy. And nobody was believing him that there was, like, 
legit eight hundred dollars worth of least Achilles fish in the first net that he took in Florida. Right. Because they're eight bucks a piece in yeah. Washington. So he could have just paid for his trip to fill his suitcase. No, That'd like be I think the B roll footage of it could have paid for his <laughs> trip, you know? Uh all right, next question, Shelby. But yeah, like uh least Killies and Gambusia are like in every body of water as well as the ghost shrimp. Ghost shrimp. Yeah. Yeah, but they're like nothing special. Like, there's like probably three. There's a different variety of ghost shrimp in my lakes than what we caught at Lucas Brett's house. Uh, yeah, and then a different one than what we caught down in uh, the Keys. There's no questions right now. Oh wow! All right. Well, if anybody's got a question, ask right now. We got maybe ten more minutes that we we're gonna talk on the live stream, anyways. But uh, I pretty much asked you this already, and I was like. Do you uh, think there was more or less shrimp? Uh, or were you expecting? And you definitely, oh, definitely, there's definitely more. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Like, this is a really cool room. Does it does it feel like it's 400 aquariums, or does it feel like more or less? I feel like it feels like more because they're everywhere. Um, I've never had somebody like try to count to like double never, check me to call me check. out. But I mean, but, you like, look right there. There's 20. So there's 20 there, and then another 20, and then. Pretty senior at 100 straight away. And These two racks alone are 190. So, uh, but then, like, I was like, there's going to be somebody in your video that tries to count, and they're going to notice that there isn't 420 because you never really went into the garage. It's just so much harder to film that, and then there's so much to film here. So, uh, it's for me, like, when we film something like this, I, what I want to make is something that you find awesome and that the audience also finds awesome. So like, I don't want to waste your time to make a video that sucks for you. So like, and I don't mean, lose the footage. No, I won't. <laughs> this got straight on the Harlan and my hard drive tonight. Awesome. Um, but the, yeah, like just making a really awesome, entertaining video. That's what people want to see. Like we don't have to show every single tank. We just need to show the coolest stuff. Yeah. The stuff that you love the most. And, and the thing is, is like, even though there's been a couple of like tour videos before, the cool stuff changes. Yeah. So every time I mean? it's different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Man. Uh, so, Nick, is there a common thread that you've noticed with all, uh, or thread or trend uh, with all the different breeds and styles? Yeah. So, like, the, so people who breed a lot of fish are really clean. Like, you could breed a lot of fish, um, like deep, anally clean, organized, uh, neat. Uh, don't they're disciplined they don't miss a day um, their setups are automated uh, simple and uh, they're scientific they're just they're not scientific guys but like you walk in and it's like a lab so those like the really good breeders and then you get like the natural breeders so yeah I mean um, but like success like you, you'll get people who like like my friend Adrian's good at putting together tanks that are just like natural and the fish kind of breed in there and then sometimes they breed in numbers but like deep right he'll take like a group of rainbows and then just make fifty thousand if he wanted to yeah he's clean i like i like dean's stories because they'll be like yeah i saw these fish at the shop and i wasn't doing nothing with them so i told jimmy to bag them up and i took them and i bred them back and i brought them back to the shop and he didn't even know they were gone and i just brought back hundreds like yeah. Being such a gangster, the way he, you know what I mean? He's just like, I'm going to breathe this. And nobody's going to tell me no. He's such a good storyteller. Like, yeah, I mean, he's he's really just awesome at getting <laughs> getting to the point of his story. And I think that's why people like him. So good yeah. storytelling. Yeah. yeah. He, and, and funny guy, too. And Yeah, the like humor helps. He's got this, like, kind of aspect to him where, like, you want to know his opinion about everything. Even though he's, he's not a food critic, you want, to, you want to know, like, what do you think about the food? Like, was it good? Can I bring anybody else here? Like, I, 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 I use Dean as, like, the the final uh, acceptance for the hot pot to be, yeah, like, yeah. the place yeah, to that go was to. Fun too. Yeah, that was fun, too. And uh, so it's not going to be a stream if we don't talk about ice cream. Yeah. I actually purposely didn't ask you about the ice cream so I can get your response on here. Yeah. What'd you think? I, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was real ice cream. Yeah? Yeah, because you know, like, when you have that, that fake ice cream that's got that, like, gelatin sort of, like, oh, I hate chewiness? It. Oh, I hate it, yeah. That was real, like, cream. Yeah. Yeah, so that was good. And then, um, do you what like would gelato? You, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. All, all forms of ice cream. But, like, what would you rate it on a 1 to 10? Probably an 8. Probably an 8? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, rookie, that's a rookie one. You know, like an 8.2 or, like, that's a rookie score. Just a solid 8? Probably a solid 8. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a... I'm not like the biggest ice cream guy. But and he just got cookie dough too. So it's like nothing fancy, nothing nah, special nah, or anything too. like that. Yeah. But like, yeah. Um, but uh, it was good. I, like like I can cream. imagine cookie dough would be better from a place that did both ice cream and cookies. Oh, I did. Yeah. And I, I believe they probably did like just sourced their cookie dough, but they just add it to their like homemade the ice, best cookie dough. ice cream. Dude, honestly, you know? the best ice cream, I don't know if you agree, but like the best cookie dough ice cream is Ben and Jerry's. It's down for me. So I I don't eat too much Ben and Jerry's just because like I like volume, man. Like I want the most (laughs) ice cream I can get for like a couple bucks, you know. So and then I I do like some of the Ben and Jerry flavors. Don't get me wrong, but like you you really gotta be a triple chocolate cake and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one too. You you really gotta be in a place where like there's no options and like Ben and Jerry's is always a solid option. You go to like some hotels and they'll have Ben and Jerry's. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, I'll take that. Yeah. And it's only like a dollar more than a little pick me up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, I loved it. Uh, And it was like just a great finish. Overall, though, do you think Australia has better ice creams? No. No. Because my dad always swore that New Zealand like had way better ice cream than. No, so I think Australia probably had better gelato. Okay. Um, we have a gelato place, though. Could have taken you to a gelato place, too. Next dude, time. <laughs> I'm the wrong person to be asking about what, which type of ice cream to eat, for sure. But, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I had a, it was good. It was uh, we got, I like our gelato place, but I only, like, really, really like their white chocolate gelato. Yeah. And it's, like, a flavor that they only do, like, once every other week. So if you don't go on the right day, and, like, I never want to look the place up. I don't even remember, like, the way the place is called. It's got, like, a weird name. Have you ever had the matcha ice cream? Like that green tea stuff? Yeah, I have not tried that yet. I know what you're talking about, but I, have, I haven't tried it's it pretty yet. pretty good. Is it? Well, I like matcha, but, yeah. I've never tried matcha at all. I thought it was nice, yeah. Yeah? Oh, man. Uh, maybe I'll give it a try. <laughs> you give me a recommendation. All right. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate the five dollar super chat. The biggest cities you have been to is Adrian really as cool as he appears. What's the biggest city you've been to first? Uh, probably uh, LA. Or yeah. you haven't been to New York yet? No, I've never been there. Oh, no, man. LA probably. And then um, yeah. And then uh, yeah, Adrian's a cool dude. Yeah, I mean, and that's the one that you're saying we're getting along with LRB. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah dude, so those, I think I watched Adrian's shrimp room. Get along. Yeah. Or not shrimp room, fish room <laughs> yeah. tour video that you had done with them. And those two need to get in contact and meet each other somehow. Cause like, <laughs> I mean, they're in contact. The LRB says he talks to them all the time. <laughs> so I don't blame him, bro. Yeah. yeah I was like talking to him. <laughs> we were at LRB's for his son's birthday and he was like talking about like, yeah, Adrian and his videos. And then I went and watched that before he came down. So. Before that, I mostly just watched your, your shrimp tour video. Yeah. Uh, somebody did rec- I, don't, I don't remember whose place that was, but they had Glenn. some really higher end. You'd like, if nice you shrimp. came to Australia, make sure you met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see some Australian tours. The I the people that run the IBC, do you guys have an international beta contest in Australia? No, no, they're trying to either. They're trying to get one started and running, and they wanted to do shrimp at the same time. And they're asking me all these questions. I just never had time to, like, help them out and sort it all out. Well, so I wonder if it got running. If you ever came, I'd take you out and have a good time. Oh, no, for, for sure. I, I, I could already tell, like, yeah, we, we, we had a crack out time at just, just running around LRBs and hanging out that night. So It just sucks when we do these filmings because it's like, you know, got four days and we spend half the time just running around getting B-roll. So it's like we barely get to hang out. You know hey, what if I mean? you don't want to spend the whole Valentine's Day with Harlan, you let us know. We, <laughs> yeah, we, we, might, do, we might go do some... <laughs> yeah. uh, Ice cream Collecting out there, yeah. It's yeah. gonna be a, a boom. Yeah. Well, let me know how the ice cream is. Maybe I'll, I'll go check yeah, it out. Yeah. Um, what is Nick's favorite part of the hobby right now? Um, my favorite part of the hobby is nano fish. Definitely. Um, favorite um, nano fish. Probably. Uh, probably still my little, little luminatus. I love those fish. I bought Dean some. Like I said, man. 
there's one fish this guy needs to be bringing to his room. It's Luminatus. So like, and what is an Illuminatus? So Luminatus is like a Gatrude. Okay, so it's a Pseudomogul. Pseudomogul. Yeah. And it's got really nice blue eyes, a red body, and a and like blue line over the top. But these males flare at each other. And they I found them easy to breed. Um, they're one of the fish that just fell into my fish room. My friend Jason actually had them in a pond. He wanted to give me them so that he could keep them, get them back in summer or whatever. So I bred a shitload of them. Yeah. yeah. And you over the bl- honey blue eyes? Well, so the problem with honey blue eyes is they're hard to breed inside. But outside they breed well. But what's the point when you only get to look at them from above? So, um, but that's not true. Like, people have figured it out. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. So my goal is to breed a bunch outside so that I can start pulling them and do them back inside again. There was another part of that question and I forgot what it was. Oh, um, was it biggest? Oh, city? what's no? What's your biggest struggle or frustration oh, right now in the hobby? Um, the biggest struggle is just being away from the room. Yeah. I'm trying to figure that out um, and having enough time to do everything. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, absolutely. You, you figure that out quick. You only got like twenty four hours in a day, and you want to like, you want to have a good balance in your life. You want to enjoy doing things, and balance is important. Um, and then you want to have, like, I don't know, it's a whole Japanese term for like where, but I'm talking way out of my depth, but it's like you do a job that like fulfills you, pays you money and all that sort of stuff. So just working on all that. Full balance around circle. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, all right. We got this one on to the next one. The black tabbies I bought from you months ago are all now coloring and showing some saddles. What's the best way to keep the babies grown? Um, just keep on doing the water changes and just keep on feeding them their foods. And that's all there really is to it. It's just consistency and, uh, you know, making sure this time of the year, your temperatures don't go down too, too far and, uh, you maintain your water changes and you should still have good breeding. Like you're impressed with all the buried shrimp throughout the house. That's how you know if you've got a good carrot in a room. Because if every, if every tank, you can see a buried female. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. I there, to there's, there was a couple of shrimp that were giving me problems last year. Super crystals and the uh, uh, super tigers. And I think if one tank doesn't have buried one, it's those Hummel ones. And yeah. I think like religiously they s- stop this time of the year no matter what. Like they've always done that. And this, the parents just bees. But I think I actually have buried ones in both of their tanks so um and there's babies in there too and this time of the year it's crazy so because they're doing it i think that they just might need a little bit more water change to just get to get get them going or maybe even more food i noticed they eat their food a little bit quicker so i might just boost up the food i did that with the super tigers and they started breathing again i think i need to feed even more food to the hummer definitely uh what tips would you give for Breeding zebra danios. I heard y'all mention them, but missed anything you said. Side note: Looking forward to the next vid in the U.S. Hopefully, you can come this way. Um. So for I mean, zebra danios are a great, easy starting fish. So, I mean, uh, the way I bred them, I bred them in a breeder box to start with. Yeah. Um. Probably one of the easiest ways is the same thing. Put them in a tank with a floating bucket. Just any way you can separate the eggs out and not get eaten by the parents. You can do marbles. There's a billion ways and methods to look it up. Um, I think, like, just give it a crack, play around with them, um, because, yeah, they're one that that is good to cut your teeth on. You shouldn't be having too much trouble. Like, scientists spawn them every day to use the eggs because they're so easy to breed. And they can uh, develop cancer and use yeah. them for cancer treatments. So, yeah. like, yeah, you can, like, I mean spawn them in tubs and they'll just breathe like crazy but yeah did we hit all the dono questions all right so this is from the guy that made you the sign oh do, yeah dude i can't wait to put that on yeah so it dude, is actually on that. the front door if you notice when you walk yeah, in the I house that. yeah it's got the perfect place thank you so much i think lrb loves his just as much as we love ours this is a great gift thank you so much man uh shelby also was like super ecstatic about it and i look for you 
to uh, point out, point you out, so Shelby could come say thank you. And I didn't see you at the end of the video. Yeah, so I was trying to find him at the end of the thank day. Thank you so much, man. That's going straight up. That's there's an Australian. All the Aussies listening. That's going straight to the pool room. You yeah. know what that means, but is it is it like a uh, like a day room? Yeah, 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 it's just like from a movie, like the classic Aussie movie. It's like going straight to the pool room. It's like a man cave, yeah, type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. Like you've got a billiards table and like get the pool room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so you say pool room? I'm thinking like uh, pool room, like because my friend's cool. house used to have a, a, a room next to the swimming pool. Yeah. That was his home. Yeah, that's that's cool. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Grant, is your shirt one of the current ones available on your site? I really like the green. No, it is not, but I think maybe in the future it might be one of the ones we add up. Uh, Shelby made this shirt for me just so I had something for the shows. I love me a boot pocket. Like, there, there ain't you nothing I love. For the microphone. Oh, not just the microphone, but, like, if you're ever dealing with sales at one of the shows, money in the pocket's way easier to fumble around with. And, like, pulling you see my little bit that pulling around everywhere? No, I thought that was like for your SD drives or something like that. No, I was like, I just put that around this trip because I had like the passport. You're such a tourist if you're wearing a man purse, man. That's something like I'm a tourist. A, a Greek guy would do. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just need the mustache again. <laughs> uh, besides, oh man, stumbling along. Besides fish keeping and breeding, what are some of the other hobbies you have? Um, Surfing. No, nah, it's not my hobby. That's Harlan's. Oh. He took me out a few times, though. We had okay. fun, but it's not my hobby. Um, I'm, I play golf um, with my mates and stuff. Sometimes. How often do you play golf? Not often. Um, no, I used so to like play every... as much as I did then, huh? Yeah, yeah. But I used to play every day as a kid. Um, oh, see, that, that's why you're so good at your short game. It's the everyday play. I'm not play. good at short game, but no? I'll probably be better than you, but, <laughs> but um, golf and um, dude, fish is a hobby. I'll tee one up in the front yard and I'll, I'll let you hear how far, how far I can. Yeah. I don't. I reckon you can bomb one. I definitely reckon you can get me on the drive. But I was impressed. You outthrew me yeah. in the rocks, and I, it was it, it. It really got to me. It was like that was a big throw. Damn, too. the young and got me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. Uh, it's hard. I mean, I, I try and play golf to like go and have some fun. Um, I love hanging out with my friends and just like. Are you a cart guy or a, a trolley? Walk Maybe. it. Oh, I walk. walk. Oh. Yeah, because like, I like the walk. That's part of it. The walk's part of it. Get your steps up. Get the butt of a deer. Oh, no. The uh, there's nothing like just relaxing in the golf cart and just pulling up after, you know, and just <laughs> ripped one and then you rip another one and it's all good, man. Uh, I live it up on the golf courts. I like the, the golf we courses with the time. fancy one. Next oh. time we'll play Ne next time I'm playing at your grandma's course. Dude, your grandpa's course. I'm inviting play. myself there. That Dude, looks like the nicest course, man. Let's, Let's do a golf match. Uh, <laughs> some doubles matches. Yeah, yeah it'd be so fun. Uh, uh, I don't I, know. I but golf is like fun. the worst thing to watch for people to watch. I don't think you could get a lot of viewers. Good. Unless we're all like trying to be like John Daly and you had to drink like a, a beer on every hole or something like that. I don't know. Uh, between you and Nick, y'all's videos are what got me through my hospital stay. I really appreciate you both. So uh, Jesse had a blowout in a turn going 40 miles an hour in his van and it launched him out of his van and the van caught fire. So if he didn't launch out of the van, he would have burnt up and they didn't find him until like 45 minutes after the paramedics had already gotten to see me. And like one cop, I guess, didn't give up and found him within like three minutes between like him bleeding out or something like that. So he's got like no shoulder, like his shoulder like completely got like dehinged and he's got to have surgery and he's able to walk. He had like a deflated lung and he, he was about to help me at the last show for the uh, American Shrimp Contest. So it happened just beforehand. But great dude. I met him when we were at the Keystone Clash and um, he's kind of like in the middle of me and Lucas, like. His tank setups, you know. Right. Well, that's awesome. I mean, like, yeah, you don't when you think when you make the videos, you don't think about people watching them, really. So, yeah. Like, for I mean, I'm I'm happy that they helped us. Like, I'm happy that you can just sit there and relax and hopefully enjoy it, learn a few things, and yeah, that's a cool thing about this hobby. Like, it's it's therapeutic. You know? And 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 for me, that's full circle because like I joined this whole community and stuff because I broke my leg, and I had no nothing else to do. So I was like, all right. 
I, I've met these yeah. guys. I've become friends with them at Aquashella. Let's start supporting them and watching some of their videos. And then, like, I just met so many people through it. And before I even started doing live streams, I bought this mic so I could start doing it. This was what I bought for my birthday, and I didn't do, start doing live streams for, like, a month later. Huh. You, you, you're familiar with the Sure mics? No, I'm not. No, I, how are they, they good? It's, it's the same mic that Joe Rogan uses. So what? I thought I thought you would, yeah. Like this was my birthday present. How much is it? Uh, this one was two eighty, but like they have a better version for like five hundred. I'm actually in the market for another mic. Dude, I love this. Okay. Like uh, the mic that we were using before picks up the humming from the pumps. This doesn't. No. Nice. No, but it does pick up the frogs when they have a, a party bass. in the back. Huh? You know when you like listen, it's got like that nice like bass sound. Yeah. That too. Yeah, you can change the settings and, and like really yeah. dial it in. Uh, there's that another one fun. that has a better plug. So this is that micro USB, uh, I think. Yeah. There's there's the the professional plug ones that are the more money, but like this this so is the most money. bang for your buck that I think we could have gotten. Make sure you don't break oh yeah, we we break this, and because this cord whatever I'll, I'll hit it with my knee or something and it breaks that but the mic is fine yeah yeah it's, it's such good quality and worth the money i'm so happy this is like our first investment that's and it's solid. paid for itself after the first couple of months it's so yeah. yeah i that's why i was like dude i need to invest in something to walk around with that's the same quality as yeah, these do you have lavalier mics yeah no, no. well yes. we you have some cheap ones yes. but like ones. yeah so this is the last super chat and then we'll wrap, we'll wrap it up all right uh, Nick, top three fish rooms in Australia that you've covered, not counting yours. Well, that's a compliment to say not counting mine. I actually didn't think mine was up there, but um, so tops. Uh, I mean, probably honestly, I probably Adrian's room, um, just for like aesthetics, breeding. Um, yeah, it was nice, nice room. Um, my friend Eliza has a really nice fish room too. Hers is um, for nano fish and. That place is just immaculate. I've had it. The thing is, it's a really tight space. I've had trouble filming it and giving that that full kind of. But we're gonna get there. We've got two there's, videos of that. There's a guy that breeds peacock cichlids, yeah. like 15 minutes south of here. But like, it's impossible to film the room because he's maxed it out to where like there's shoulder length in between some of the the tanks. Well, but he so has hard. maximized his space. It's efficient. Everything runs on a flip of the switch. You know what I mean? So. And he does plecos and the cichlids on top. And then he puts the uh, mouth rearing cichlids in with the plecos, the fry, because the the females can't eat the fry. And then when they release the fry, they pull them out and they, he raises the pleco fry and the peacocks all at the same time. <laughs> so it's like super efficient, but yeah. it's like so hard to film. Like I understand that. Yeah, yeah. So that makes So it one hard. more. Um, and then probably... Uh, I mean, my other mate Tony has a really good room too. I yeah, like his room. So, um, I mean, he just had an injury too, but hopefully we get back in four years. And um, yeah. Oh. yeah. And, and this is this is this is the the sweet lady that took care of me when I went to Gary's. Um, so if you want to be pampered, I can put you into contact with Lady Diane, and like she'll make you the best breakfast you've ever had, and. Um, I'm not, she, she might not take you on a, a tour to the Missouri river. She said that her last time was with me. So, you know, but she knows the good ice cream spots and she'll take care of you. She, she's like the sweetest lady I've ever met in the hobby. Her, her and DD really can't compare to the two of them. So she's yeah. right in Gary Lang's neighborhood and she's got a little fish room. It's where the Vienna guppies came from. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So uh yeah thank you so much man right, this has been a great stay dude i look forward to your future visits and i'm definitely same. gonna have to visit you in australia oh dude anytime like dude i can't thank you guys enough um shelby especially too like especially guys, shelby yeah, dude, more shelby than me i didn't clean hardly oh, shelby anything put up with so much you know like I, I mean i came right in your family life and you know interrupted the kids especially the kids just being nice and all that we went out for dinners um i mean you guys drove us up to lrb's yesterday bro I can't thank you enough Oh yeah, dude, lifesaver. So yeah. Well, the kids all had a blast. They enjoy hanging out with little yeah, LRB yeah, Junior yeah. Wesley. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, it, it was a trip. Yeah, man. Like we missed the like, Super Bowl oh, all no, together. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm <laughs> no, sorry. No, no. We're just not football people at all. But 
I missed the UFC fights this weekend too. So that, that, that must it's tell you you're we'll something special. You, no, you, 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 you were worth it already. Thanks, so oh, yeah, appreciate guys. it, guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. Thanks, everybody, especially Jeff Kane. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.